from Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville, Florida. Tonight, Sports Channel Florida presents the 1999 Florida High School Activities Association Class 5A Football Championship. It's the Dreadnoughts from Lakeland taking on the Rutherford Rams out of Springfield. The Dreadnoughts bring a lot of talent and a lot of fans over to Gainesville for this championship game and a new quarterback. Johnny Jones was injured. The new quarterback is Kedrick Frazier playing in his first game. Jones, a three-year starter. On the other side, dressed in all black and ready to go, the Rutherford Rams. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Todd Callis along with Brady Ackerman, Terry Norvell down on the sidelines for us. Now, Brady, when you talk about these two teams, a key matchup, the strong offense out of Lakeland against a very tough defense in Rutherford. Hey, you're exactly right. This ought to be a great matchup. I mean, Rutherford, the best defense in Class 5A in the state, giving up 100 yards a game at Lakeland, that high-powered offense. But without Johnny Jones tonight, should make for an interesting matchup. The Lakeland Dreadnoughts rode to the finals. Pretty smooth waters for the Dreadnoughts with one exception. Yeah, they had one tough matchup. That was Tampa Hillsborough, a good Hillsborough team, 19-14, to 14, then just... Blew out an Ely team a week ago who was pretty good as well. 41 to 12 on a roll as they come to the championship game. Johnny Jones injured in that Ely game, so Johnny Mack, the running back, becomes that much more important. There's Johnny Jones, the quarterback. He won't play, but he'll be there in earnest for support, cheering on his uh, dreadnought teammates. This guy has to shoulder to load now with that injury. Johnny Mack, 18 touchdowns, 1,297 yards, and he gets you, he can take it the distance, and he gets you the tough yards as well between the tackles. The Rutherford Rams ranked number four in Class 5A, a very difficult road to the final. Very difficult road, starting in with Jacksonville's perennial power, Ed White, in a tough win, 14 to seven, then knocking off Lake City, Columbia, another perennial power, then the state champion from a year ago, Kissimmee Osceola, last week, 21 to 20. They beat number three and number two tonight, looking to beat number one, and they'll try and do so behind one of their star players, their strong running back, Jonathan Griggs. Yeah, Jonathan Griggs can do it on the ground, and he does. He loves to carry the rock between the tackles. 13 touchdowns. He also has seven interceptions. Look for this guy on defense as well. We have an outstanding matchup brewing, the 5A championship between Lakeland and also the team out of Springfield, the Rutherford Rams. Right now, let's send it down to the field and Terry Norvell. Okay, guys, the story on the field is the mind games being played by both coaches due to the injury of Lakeland quarterback Johnny Jones. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Talking with Rutherford head coach Steve Harden about the injury to Lakeland's quarterback, he said, oh, it's no change. We don't change anything. They run the option a lot. They've got plenty of athletes. Nothing will be changed defensively. No big deal. Then I go to the other side and talk to Lakeland head guy Bill Castle, and he uses kind of the woes me approach. Man, our quarterback's gone. We, it, it, it's only one week. We can't change what we do. I don't know what we're going to do. I think there's some mind games. The old psychological warfare is up and running early here on the field. We have the makings of an outstanding championship game. The atmosphere is electric. Lakeland, Rutherford, 5A title game coming your way next on Sports Channel. The FHSAA Championships on Sports Channel Florida are brought to you by Dairy Farmers Incorporated. Got milk? The Lakeland Dreadnoughts undefeated, ranked number six in the nation by USA Today, looking tonight for a Class 5A championship. Standing in their way, the outstanding program from Springfield, the Rutherford Rams. Coming into this game, having knocked off number three in the regional finals and number two in the state semifinals, tonight they eye up number one. Bill Castle looking for his third state championship. Castle winning in 1986 and again in 1996, his 24th year at Lakeland High. On the other sideline, Steve Harden. He's in his ninth year at Rutherford, 89 and 22 overall. He was in the state championship in 97. Lost a tough game, 13 to 10, as they were ranked number one that year. Todd Callis, Brady Ackerman, Terry Norvell, glad he could join us on what should be an outstanding 5A championship from the swamp on the campus of University of Oh, I'm jacked for this one, Todd. 5A football, this is, doesn't get any better than this. Huge crowd tonight. Lakeland has the orange. And Rutherford has the black. Here we go. Good crowds from both schools. We are underway. And the kickoff goes to Johnny Mack. Johnny Mack breaking tackles all the way out to the 46-yard line. Quite a start for Lakeland. He's the guy we highlighted in the open. Johnny Mack's got to step up. His partner in crime, Johnny Jones, out with the, the uh, ankle injury. Won't play tonight, the quarterback. 
So he's got to carry the load and make something happen. This is a huge night for Kedrick Frazier, the junior. You see his numbers. He hasn't played a whole lot this year, only coming in the second half when Lakeland has had the game at hand. Why is that? Because Mr. District 12 MVP, three-year starter, Johnny Jones was injured last week in the semifinal victory against Ely. So Kedrick Frazier will have this offensive line in front of him. District 12 first teamer Alex Saunders anchors the offensive line. Matt Rockle, George Lott, Dontrell Stills, and David Porter also both good ones on the right side. Watch for the tight end, Kyle Kobe. He is outstanding. District 12 first teamer. He's heading to the University of Miami. He's a tight end. Throwing on first down. Kedrick Frazier airing it out. Well overthrown. But there's a little sign of the strength of his arm as he throws that ball 65 yards in the air. I like the call by Bill Castle early on. Stretch it out. Let the young quarterback take a chance down the field. Get him in the flow of the game. To get away those nerves. I like the call. Here is your defense for Roosevelt. The five up front, Johnny Jackson, outstanding left tackle, Mark Tibbs, David Atwell, Lonnie Creighton, another great one in Laredo Jin. Your linebackers in secondary, JoJo Brown leading and tackling, Reed Fleming second, Jonathan Griggs, Jerry Dempsey, Jamie Farmer, and Michael Flawn. On second down and 10, Johnny Mack with the carry left side, not going very far. He was taken down by Laredo Jin. An outstanding defense Rutherford has. I mean, their front seven is as good as it'll get in high school. It'll be a third down situation for Frazier, third down and a long nine. And you look at this, as we talked about at the top of the program, this Rutherford team doesn't give up much on defense, and this Lakeland offense is very high-powered, and they do have the big front five, two 300-pounders, a 295-pounder. Those guys are going to have to help Kedrick Frazier get along as they battle this Rutherford defense, but uh, it's going to be a war of attrition tonight. Watch for Mark Tibbs all night long. He wears number 74. He was a first-team All-Stater last year. And there is a big stop defensively. Reed Fleming coming in. Lonnie Creighton, who was a Class 5A Player of the Year nominee, also helping out. There's your first stand, Brady Ackerman. Right there, you know, Mark Tibbs, 21 tackles for loss right there. Big number 74. He can move it around for a big fella. College recruiters are beating down his door. Reed Fleming, you'll hear his name all night, number 82 for the Rutherford Rams. Short punt from the 45-yard line only goes to the Rutherford 36. So punt of 24 yards, and Rutherford will take over with pretty good field position, first and 10. And there is the man of the hour right now for Rutherford, the quarterback, Matt Harden. Look at his numbers on the year, 10 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, 1,500 yards. The kid is only a freshman. Wow. But he's a coach's son. And so he's seen a lot of these games as a youngster going to the, you know, going to all the high school games that his dad's coached and been involved in and seen his brother play. Uh, so he understands what it takes to win. His brother Blake quarterback that 97 team to finish runner up. Here's a long gain on a carry by Jonathan Griggs. Big first down carry on the first play of scrimmage by the Rams. That offensive line. Will be so key tonight for the Rams. Here it is from left to right. Ron Olds, Daniel Brown, Robert Acklin, Joseph Brown, Clayton Crum. Your receivers, Jonathan Griggs, the running back. The fullback in front of him, Johnny Jackson, outstanding running backs. Javon Baker, a great receiver. Mike Jones, the other side, and your tight end, Chris Chandler. Mike Harden has some weapons offensively. See what he can do on first and 10 from the Lakeland 46. That's the fullback, Johnny Jackson. Gained about four or five before he was stuffed by Mandrell Butler. Let's look at that Lakeland defense, left to right. Chauncey Clark leads the team in tackles. Josh Phillips, Aaron Harris, Johnny Jean second in tackles. The linebackers across from the strong side, Mandrell Butler, Butler, Tommy Gunther, Isaac Jackson, your secondary, Dante Galloway. Free safety, Kareem Taylor, strong safety, Antoine Denson, Sean Fuller is your cornerback. Rutherford getting a good push right now in that Lakeland defense. It is second down, call it five, just underway in the 5A championship. And on left side, looking for running room is Jonathan Griggs. He had over 1,000 yards this year, and he has a first down for Rutherford. Yeah, and this is a different version of the wing T type plays that Rutherford runs out of the split back. Watch him right here, they'll pull both guards. That's the old buck sweep, and he'll follow both guards, cut back up inside, and Griggs getting the first down. 
And, and this may be where this game is won or lost. Lakeland has the high-powered offense. The Rams have the high-powered defense. That may be a wash. The difference may be how well Rutherford's offense or how well Lake, Lakeland's defense dominates this game. That may be where this game is decided. Lakeland gives up very few points in the first half. Lakeland thought they saw movement on the Rutherford offensive line. No flags, however. And the carry is only good for a couple yards, maybe three. Motion. Taking that carry, Johnny Jackson. Jackson had 907 yards to go along with Jonathan Griggs, 1183. And he's a bruising runner. 5'11", 250. Here, here you'll see it right here over the right side of the line. There's the back moving, staying in his stance. I don't know what the call there was on that, but he even makes a good block there as well. Griggs does, and they get some positive yards. Griggs and Jackson in the backfield. This is Jonathan Griggs looking for a hole. Gang tackled inside the 30 to the 28. The hand sweep to the other side snuffed out a little better by that Lakeland defense this time. And what you'll see tonight, and both these teams do it on the ground. And watch right here on the sweep. See the two guards pull. Everybody blocks down. Now they pull the buck sweep right there. The guards he gets a kick out block. It's a good job of Griggs getting what he can instead of stretching it out but also a nice job by the Lakeland defense that time on the Bucks sweep. That'll set up a third down, call it third down and four. Rutherford needs to get to the 24-yard line. On the pass, Harden throws complete. First down, Javon Baker at the 20. Look at the freshman, Harden, checking to the hitch. What happens is they come out in a two-wide receiver set. He reads the coverage. It was a zone coverage, a cover three. Corners back way off, so he gives the signal out there right before the snap for for them to run the hitch. The three-step hitch throws it to him. Nice catch, first down. Had they been up in press coverage, you'd give him a single for a fade route. Good job, good heady play by the freshman. So Rutherford, an impressive drive offensively on their first series. First and 10 just outside the 20-yard line. The handoff up the middle, the fullback Jackson take it down. First man there on the hit was number one, Isaac Jackson. Well, and this is just what Coach Harden wants from his offense. Pound it, pound it, make first downs, eat clock, let that outstanding defense rest before they get back on the field. Here's the trap play right here. 61 with the kick out block right there, Joseph Brown. And a good first down game, four yards. Second down and seven after the gain of three. This is Griggs once again. Griggs kicks it to the outside, taken down from behind. Fine defensive play by middle linebacker Tommy Gunther. Outstanding play by Tommy Gunther right there from the middle linebacker position. As you see, he's going to do a good job getting downhill on the sweep. Watch him in the middle of your screen right there. Okay, he reads sweep. He sees the two guards. He gets underneath the block right there and then runs in hot pursuit right there at Jonathan Griggs and makes the tackle. Very solid play right there from Tommy Gunther from the middle linebacker position. And they're going to need a lot of those plays tonight to shut down Griggs. Rutherford looking over a third down and eight. The 5'8 freshman Harden throws outside completely stuck. Short of the first down, what a hit by the corner. Dante Galloway, a senior playing in his final high school game. Mike Jones might have got de-cleated on that one. Watch Dante Galloway. Here it is in real speed right here. He's throwing the little out route. Bang. Wow. That one hurt me. That was an outstanding hit form tackle. He got right there on time. Broke on the ball. It was a little flat route. And uh, Dante Galloway making the hit. Rutherford only tried two field goals the entire season. They're going to go for it right here. Fourth and two. They need to get beyond the 11. Harden now calls timeout, trying to draw Lakeland offside. Now we'll see if they bring in the kicker. The kicker, they have two of them. They use Jacob LaCours and Jonathan Fromm. LaCours tried two field goals. Fromm tried a few longer field goals on the year, but it looks like they may still decide to go for a fourth. We'll have to wait and see. We'll take a timeout right now as there's a timeout on the field. 5.29 remaining in the first quarter. Scoreless, but Rutherford is on the move. Welcome back to the Class 5A Championship. 
Big play early in this game. Rutherford all the way down to the Lakeland 13, going for it on fourth and two. Jackson, the fullback, needed to get to the 11. No, he did not. Lakeland's defense is held, and they will turn the ball over to the Dreadnought offense. And credit the interior of that defensive line, number 56, Josh Phillips, number 37, Aaron Harris, getting up in there and stopping the push of the offensive line, and then the linebackers coming back. And that is the kind of stand you need early on if you're going to win a championship. And I would have, you know, I, I questioned the call a little bit in that, you know, and, and Coach Harden knows this team better than anybody, but with two yards, that's a long yard. And as you said, this Lakeland team has not given up a lot of points in the first half of games. They've won a lot of blowouts. Most of the points have come in the second half. That's an awfully good defense they're going up against. Uh, I would think you'd try something wide, something that was working early with Griggs in the sweep, but they tried to run a smash mouth football and it didn't work. The ball's back in the dreadnought hands. Lakeland in 14 games has allowed 38 first half points, less than three per game in the first half, including only seven points allowed in any game in the second quarter. On first down, the handoff goes for about three yards to the 12 yard line. Lorani got Galishaw with the carry. Second down, call it a long six as the ball is spotted just beyond the 15 yard line. Frazier hands off again. This is Galishaw. Galishaw doesn't go very far. The middle of the defensive line, very tough for Rutherford. David Powell getting off the ball extremely quick. Number 30, just showing what defensive line coaches call ball get off he timed the snap up great and hemmed him up in the backfield I'm telling you this is going to be a field position battled game turnovers and big plays are going to tell the champion tonight because these are two good defenses third down seven needing to get the ball to the 22 yard line Frazier throws complete and he is just shy Ooh. of a first down it's going to be very close depending on the spot I don't know they may have given him the spot Todd very close Josh Smith, check that, that's Kyle Kobe, the big tight end, 6'3", senior, who's heading to the University of Miami. Kobe with the catch, and we're going to see where the spot is, and maybe just shot. Just a curl flat, he makes the first guy miss, but his knee hit down, as you'll see back on the line, but they marked it where the ball went down, which is right at the first down marker. That'd be a, that's a tough spot for Rutherford. Boom! Oh. You can see it very clearly there. He comes up short, but it's actually his knee hit down right at the 20. Apparently there is a flag down, too, so Lakeland will be moved back towards their own end zone. We'll hear the call, and then we'll let Terry Norvell take it away from the field, but first the call. Blocking below the waist. Uh, half the distance to the goal from the uh, spot of the foul. Repeat third down. Terry? Okay, guys, let me tell you a little bit about Kedrick Frazier, the quarterback from Lakeland. He's got a little Dan Kendra in him. You see, he goes about 5'9, 205. The kid bench presses 315 pounds. And, oh, by the way, during the offseason, he throws a shot put for the track club. Little Dan Kendra in that guy. There you go. He is <laughs> a strong guy at quarterback. Just tell him to stay away from scientific experiments. <laughs> Here's a pitch outside and some running over the big Coming up with a big hit for the Rutherford Rams was number 28, Jamie Farmer. Oh, my goodness, Jamie Farmer coming up there. Very Ronnie Lot-like, showing reckless abandon. Watch this. Now, here's a quick speed option. See, he fakes the, the fullback, gets the option, gets him out on the corner at a great speed. Now, watch this. Boom! Mm. Wow. That is two deep leaders we've seen from this awesome defense from Rutherford. Look at this. Real speed. It just shows you what kind of intensity we have in this game. Kyle Kobe, the outstanding tight end, is also the punter. Gets a bad bounce on that punt, and the ball will end up right near midfield for Rutherford. I'm going to tell you, that defense, over 14 games for Rutherford's given up 105 yards a game on the average, 7.1 points. That is it. They flat out stick it. And we thought this might be a defensive battle, and so far the battle is being won by Rutherford, even though 
both teams have held Rutherford with great field position offensively and turnovers can make it the other way and uh, you know if, if you're like with you know now it would be a good time maybe to get you a turnover or another three and out and you can get that field position turned in your advantage big hole up the middle and going towards the end zone and going into the end zone is Jonathan Briggs touchdown Rutherford on a 51 yard run There's the man we talked about, Jonathan Griggs. Electric, electrifying the crowd with the touchdown run. Lakeland had everybody up in the box. It was almost as if they knew where the play was going, and they still got blocked up. Look, they had everybody on the line of scrimmage. Just an isolation play. They pulled a guard up in the hole. No safety in the middle of the field. And by the time Kareem Taylor tried to get there from the other side of the field, it was too late. Interesting. Actually, that was a good call by Coach Harden against that defense. I mean, they, they actually schemed that one up exactly the way they wanted. They got the defense they wanted, they got the blocks they wanted, and Jonathan Griggs got the touchdown that the Rutherford Rams wanted. Jacob LaCourse, who missed only one extra point all season long, misses one here, but this play makes it 6 nothing. Yeah, and credit Joseph Brown again, number 61, with an outstanding block. It was just an isolation G play where they pull the backside guard and lead him up in the hole. Joseph Brown gets the block to spring Jonathan Griggs, and they had everybody else blocked up as well. And that's what Rutherford does. They control the ball on the ground. They're a very disciplined offense. They're not high as high scoring and high powered as Lakeland's offense, but the entire season, this is a running team. Uh, they run first the entire season. They fumbled, have lost six fumbles. On the other side, Lakeland, who is very high powered, has lost 18 fumbles. So that could be a key in tonight's game. Obviously, Harden, when he throws, he usually completes it because everybody's so again, you know, you see his stats and he's thrown for over a thousand yards. Right. Well, it's because you know it's a lot of play action passes. As everybody's trying to stop the run. So certainly, uh, you know, they have got it going early, and, and, and they controlled this game from the outset. No doubt about it, the Rams on top 6-0 after the missed extra point. Jonathan Griggs getting the job done offensively, and that Rutherford Rams D very solid in the early going. 3.09 left in the first quarter. I, Todd, I think I could get back in coaching and be an offensive coordinator if, I, if, I, if my defense told me all you got to do is get me eight points and we'll take care of the rest. <laughs> I think I can come up with eight points for you. You could handle that. Here's a short kickoff, and a couple of players battle for it. Finally coming away with it uh -oh. is Kareem Taylor. Kareem Taylor breaks through. Kareem Taylor at midfield, and he oh. just gets tackled up from behind by Mike Jones, what might have saved the touchdown, as Kareem Taylor battled for that ball with his teammate, and he finally came away with it. Isaac Jackson also going for it, and by the time he did, worked out tremendously this is a huge play right here in this football game early on Lakeland's had nothing going right field position's been against them everything then they get a huge play from the special teams right there Kareem Taylor taking it back setting that Lakeland offense up with that young quarterback in a good field position in Rutherford's territory now let's see if the Rutherford defense can respond Adrick Taylor starting his first game as a varsity player and you couldn't think of a more excruciating forum than playing in a state championship game for your first time ever out there. Frazier hands off to Lorani Galishaw. Galishaw gains about three on first down. Yeah, tough three as well. The fullback dive plays probably not going to get a whole lot tonight for Lakeland, but in the realm of their offense and what they like to do with the option, you have to, to make the linebackers honor your option plays and to honor your fullback. You just got to keep giving it to him every once in a while. Feed the fullback to keep everybody on that defense on. Galashaw goes 5'11", 182. Johnny Mack, the tailback, 5'7", 164. In motion, the handoff to Johnny Mack. Johnny Mack cuts it back inside. All the way inside the 25, first down, Dreadnoughts. Well, you saw Jonathan Griggs. Now let me tell you about the other Johnny in the house, Johnny Mack. What moves against this defense by Johnny Mack right there on the first down run. I mean, this is as nifty of a 12-yard run as you'll ever see. Watch him. a little counter play, comes back to the left side, makes one guy miss right there, makes another guy miss, and then gets forward north and south. I like it. See, he makes the move, and then he gets north and south. First down run by Johnny Mack. He's almost got too much wiggle. <laughs> Lakeland has its first first down of the game with 150 and counting remaining in the quarter. 
Take the hand up to the up back. The throw for the corner of the end zone. Jabari Sanders overthrown. Incomplete. It'll be second down and ten. You know, that looks a lot like if you've ever watched, you know, college football and you remember Donovan McNabb. Sure. That's what they run up there at Syracuse a lot. The uh, that, that little freeze option. They'll fake it to the fullback and then throw the fade off of it. It's so tough to defend. Your defensive backs have to be extremely disciplined because 90% of the time they're playing the option. They're playing the pitch. The one time that they don't pay attention, that receiver scoots on by him for a touchdown. Very tough to defend that play. Kyle Kobe, the big tight end, split out to the left-hand side. Calvin Hinson on the right-hand side, and we have a timeout on the field. Josh Smith over there with him as well. Lakeland will take a timeout right here with 1.40 to go. The Dreadnoughts trailing 6 to nothing early on. The broadcast rights to tonight's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel by the Florida High School Activities Association. Solely for the entertainment of our audience, any reproduction, transmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of Sports Channel is prohibited. You know that at missed extra point could play out. And, that, and the unfortunate thing about high school, as opposed to, you know, you've seen so many problems in colleges with Bobby Bowden had so many problems with kickers, and, you know, Florida's had some problems in Miami and so forth, is you can't recruit kickers in high school. I mean, right. you either got them or you don't have them. And obviously, Coach Harden and them, unfortunately, don't have a guy they can count on. And sometimes uh, you can only run so many good two-point plays during a season before people figure it out. So that they certainly need to have those conversions because in a game like this for a state title, every point counts. Second down and 10, Kobe in motion. They fake to Galishaw, pitch to Johnny Mack, heading outside, 20-15, Johnny Mack stretching it out to the 12-yard line, first down, Lakeland. Boy, Johnny Mack is quick, and another thing I like about him is he sets his blocks up. He had a chance right here. He could have gone inside. Watch, now they're going to just trap him. It's the trap option play. Look, see how he set his block up right there? Took it to the outside again, sets another block up, makes a tackle miss. Makes a tackler miss. See the trap option? Look, it looks like trap to the linebacker. Boom. Big block right there by 73. Matt Rockhold. And then he comes inside. See, inside, sets his blocker up, gets outside, and makes the extra five yards. Good downfield blocking by Kyle Kobe and Josh Smith. Here on the option, a flag goes down. Frazier keeps it himself. Still on his feet. Finally taken down. There you see some of the strength of Kedrick Frazier. He didn't want to go down until about the third or fourth guy hit him. Coach may want to pull him aside and tell him you need to go down once in a while because I don't know about our third string quarterback <laughs> or our third guy. Flag down. Looks like it's in the area where it'll be on the offense. And that's the way the dreadnoughts are walking backwards. We'll hear the call. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, replay first down. And both of these teams. Holding penalties really hurt their offensive flow. I mean, they like to get in flows. You're talking about passing teams getting in rhythm. Running teams like to get in flows. They like to they like to get two yards, four yards, six yards, and, and get their first down. And when they've got to start first to 20, it gets them out of their flow. And right now, uh, if you're not a big-time passing team, it's, a, it, it's tough to come up with three good run plays to pick up 25 yards. Lakeland will take a timeout as the play clock was winding down, 53 seconds left in the first quarter. That is the second timeout taken by Lakeland. And again, these are little things that Kedrick Frazier playing in his first varsity game, the game's a lot quicker now than it is when you play late in the game when the game's out of hand. And you look at this offense over the season, 38 points per game, 332 yards. And I mean, really just blowing everybody out, as you said. I mean, in that Ely team last week that they beat had a very nice season. You know, their toughest game probably of the year was Hillsboro, who was awfully good too. So. They played some very good competition and put up some big numbers. And so they're used to scoring points. So when you got a young quarterback in there and, and you're struggling a little bit, guys are looking around and wondering what's going on. But you just got to settle down. There's a lot of football left to be played for both sides. And, and once the emotion wears out and you get into the flow of the game and get into the rhythm of the game and those type of things for your offense and defense, then you'll start to see some more plays out of these two teams. Terry, what do you have for us? Okay, guys, here's something to keep an eye out for. The Lakeland coaches think they found something that Rutherford may be creeping their cornerbacks up. They're going to run maybe a couple more counter plays and then maybe spring a counter pass and take advantage of those aggressive cornerbacks. We'll check it out. Here's a pass over the middle. Kobe can't handle it. 
Kyle Cobia. District 12 first team or fine tight end leading the team with 375 yards receiving had a chance there to possibly go into the end zone. Here it is the trap option pass the other way. There they go. They're going to fake the trap and then he's just going to step up and throw and that is so tough to defend. I can't tell you. I mean Syracuse probably does it as well as anybody. It, it looks like trap then it looks like option. Now he's going to throw the quick pass but a tough drop right there by the big fella Kyle Kobe. So now that sets up second down and 20 after the holding penalty and the incompletion. This is Johnny Mack inside the 15. Rolls to about the 14. It'll be third down and about 11 or 12 from there. Yeah, this is a big play right here. And you're down in that red zone area and you had first and 10 at the 11. Now you're in third and long, but again, this is young quarterback. You, uh, in Kedrick Frazier, you need to be smart with the football. You're in field goal range. You don't want to make. You don't need to force anything. You just need to be smart. And this is right where Rutherford likes to have you in third and long. They pin their ears back and come after you in this situation. Three receivers, two split out to the right side. Back to throw. Frazier over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Cobia. Just beyond the six foot three senior tight end. And it would have been a little short of the first down marker, which would have made for a, a call on a four to one. It was a little curl route right down there by the goal line. And again, Frazier's been a little off in his passing. He seems to be real excited. He's almost throwing it too hard. You need to come back to tell him throw a nice catchable ball. Uh, you know, you, you, you want to put some zip on those curl routes, but you got to get it down. You don't want to miss high because usually there's safeties behind there. And if you miss high on a curl, it results in an INT. Here's Robbie Wright playing in his final game as a high schooler. The senior, six foot five, puts it through the upright. 31 yard field goal is good. And Lakeland is on the board, cuts the lead in half. It's now a 6 3 you're from up, the front you're lead. Up, you're up, you're up, you're up. And that was the final play of the first quarter. We're going to take a timeout. Robbie Wright makes it a three point game. It's Rutherford six, Lakeland three. Back in Gainesville, Rutherford leading Lakeland 6-3 as we begin the second quarter. Make sure to tune in to Sports Channel on New Year's Day at 10 a.m. for a live 90-minute special Toyota Bowl Week game day devoted to the Orange Gator Citrus Outback and MicronPC.com Bowl. Then at 6 o'clock, the FedEx Orange Bowl preview, your source for all the pregame hype of Florida's premier bowl game right here on Sports Channel Florida. Don't miss any of the action. You can check out my broadcast partners, Brady Ackerman and Terry Norvell on those shows. Yeah, we're going to have a big time on there. That's a good production. I'll be at the Outback Bowl in the morning and the Orange Bowl at night. But I don't know if they can match the electricity we have here tonight in this 5A state championship. This it's going to be tough to do. This, this thing's electric tonight. It's good first quarter of football. A lot of fun over here in Gainesville. The team in orange, the Lakeland Dreadnoughts, will kick it away. The ball is fielded right at the goal line. Javon Barker. Barker eludes one tackle, but not the second as he is wrestled down at the 11-yard line. Fine special teams play by Mandrell Butler. Butler, the second leading tackler on this Lakeland team on defense. Made a fine play on special teams. So, back comes the freshman Matt Harden getting final instructions from his father, the head coach Steve Harden. And that's, that is, uh, you know, now the field position battle becomes a key. You're starting on your own 10. So not only do you want to be careful with the football, which over the course of the season Rutherford has been, uh, you also want to push it out of here, make a couple of first downs. Handoff, the big fullback, Johnny Jackson, rumbles forward, picking up maybe five yards on first down. They like running behind that right side a little bit there. Clayton Crum, number 77, and Joseph Brown, 61. They might, they may have seen something. At least they like to run their, their power and base plays to the right side so far in this game. You know, they've run their sweeps and they've run their traps, but when they go for power football, they like to go to the right side. Second down and six, handoff to Jonathan Griggs, and he is stacked up. Tommy Gunther, the middle linebacker, coming off the bottom of the pile, making the play for the Dreadnoughts. 
Gunther's a, he's a nice player. I mean, this is a guy, I mean, he only weighs 205. Big range, he could put on a lot more weight probably when he goes to the next level, wherever that may be. But he is a tough middle linebacker. You know, we've talked a lot about that defense at Brotherhood. Lakeland says, hey, we play defense too. This is the corner where they're the stingiest, only allowing seven points all year long in the second. Third and two. Griggs again needed to get to the 20, did not do so. Three Lakeland tacklers converge, including Antoine Denson, number 11, also in there on the hit, was Mandrell Butler. Well, they really snuffed that one out there, and they got air quick. Watch how quick they get there. Here's that play we were talking about, the guard play. Well, the guard never gets there to make the block because big number 99, Danny, uh, excuse me, Chauncey Clark, the junior who's, an, who's gonna be an outstanding college prospect in the senior year, already is as a junior, kind of blew up the guard right there. Chauncey Clark, left defensive end, leaves the team in tackles, made a big play there. And Butler and Denson came over to help out. Punt to the 49-yard line. The Dreadnoughts will take over first and 10 in Rutherford territory, trailing six to three. And now you think about, okay, Kedrick Frazier has had one quarter under his belt. Maybe now he starts to sh show more of the poise, even though he hasn't played, started a varsity game, he has played a handful of times, including that game against Hillsborough, which is a pretty close game. He got in for a few snaps in that regional final game against the Terriers at Carlos Huerta Field in Tampa. And when you have a guy like Johnny Mack in your backfield, that'll make things a little easier. Frazier back to throw, dumps it off under a lot of pressure. He was hurried by Reed Fleming, who came in on the linebacker blitz. Yeah, he came right up the middle. You know, Rutherford's a 50 defense, a 3-4 defense. That means they have three down linemen and four linebackers. So those inside linebackers really get a chance to run and make a lot of plays and get to get after the quarterback as soon as they read pass and on the previous play there number 82 reed fleming another college prospect came up the middle and forced frazier to throw it before he could he was trying to get a swing pass out in the flat to johnny mack on the incompletion second and ten they hand off to gallishaw bouncing off tacklers well ronnie gallishaw dragging another tackler first down only 182 pounds, but he runs like he's 232. There you see him, 19 touchdowns. Uh, being a former running back, I appreciate this run. Well, Ronnie Gallishaw, look, pressure, he sees pressure right up the middle, bounces off of one guy. Now look, he's got two, three tacklers he makes miss. Four, and the other guy hangs on for dear life. Number 28, Jamie Farmer, finally bringing him down. Outstanding effort from Ronnie Gallishaw. The senior fullback for Lakeland. Couple of seniors in the backfield, Gallishaw and Mack. This is Mack. Mack gets stopped right near the original line of scrimmage. Maybe gained a yard. Man, is there some hitting going on on both sides of the ball tonight. I am telling you, we may have to put Terry down on the field in some pads. Watch this now. The defensive line's really getting off the ball quick right now for Rutherford. They, they obviously know something about the snap count, but look at that stick right there. Laredo Jim. Johnny Jackson, or excuse me, Laredo Jen made that tackle and the rest of his buddies, including Johnny Jackson diving on the pile there at the end. But certainly uh, there has been some sticking going on here early on in this 5A championship. Great hitting on both sides. Second down and nine for Lakeland. A little mix up there and Frazier will keep it himself. Looked like Frazier wanted to give the ball to the fullback Galashaw. Galashaw mm -hmm. wasn't expecting it. Yeah, and that's from inexperience, not being able to run this play the entire season. Frazier, this is that trap option play again. And, and what happens is, watch right here. See the trap block right there by 73? Now, he was going to pull it out. He was going to pull it out and go out in option 33, but he couldn't get it out of there. He got bumped off. And it's actually a smart play by him just to hang on to the ball and try to get as much as he can. Actually ended up with positive yardage of two yards. It'll be third down and seven. Lakeland needs to get to the 28-yard line. On the reverse, and now a pass out of the reverse, looking for Jabari Sanders. Oh, look at him! Josh Smith to Jabari Sanders. And Lakeland has taken the lead in the 5A championship game, 9-6. to six. What a play. I mean, Coach Castle, what a play.
play right there. He designed that one up just perfectly. It looked like a counter reverse, pulling both linemen, then Hannah University pulls up and makes the pass, and then Jabari Sanders to come down with it. Watch your linemen. See the linemen pulling? So that the, the linebackers think run, and the receiver looks like he's going to run the reverse, pulls up. Josh Smith, just a sophomore, and he hits the big play, and that's a good job also right there of Javon Sanders kind of adjusting to the ball. You know, it's tough, you know, it, you're playing under these lights, and again, I've met, alluded to this before, this is a different stadium, and they played in high school lights are lower, these lights are higher, and that was an outstanding job of adjusting to the throw. But how about the sophomore getting in there? He may be, uh, we may not know it, he's listed as a wide receiver, but we may <laughs> find out next year he may be playing quarterback for the Dreadnoughts. That was a fine throw by Josh Smith, and Jabari Sanders made a great adjustment to make the catch. Off the penalty, Lakeland will have a long attempt at an extra point. And this is key, too, right here. Right now, it's a three-point game. This will now become a 35-yard extra point attempt by Robbie Wright. Celebration penalty. He has the distance. I think he, I think it was. I didn't hear the call. The distance and Whoa. the accuracy. Whoa. Robbie Wright. Ten rows deep. Ten Easily. rows deep. Ten six dreadnoughts. This is the team ranked number one in the state of Florida. You look at all the classifications this year. 5A probably is the best class when you go one to four at least. When you talk about Kissimmee, Osceola, Lakeland, Rutherford. And here's another look at it. See, pitch. this is what's so tough to defend. You see the two linemen pulling and then the reverse. So everybody thinks it's run. He pulls up and throws pass, even though it was pretty good coverage. An outstanding job by Jabari Sanders adjusting to the ball. And the other thing, the old, oh, the old throat cut, that'll do it. That will do it. That was the 15 yarder. Yeah, you can't do that. And uh, I know they outlawed it in the NFL. The NFL uh, but not only that, though, it is a penalty. I mean, he could have been doing anything else, but you certainly don't want to do that one. And uh, But anyway, Josh Smith throwing it out there. Again, sometimes when you practice these plays in practice, you don't know how the kid's going to react in the game when the play is called. And he did a nice job as well, giving his receiver a chance to go out and catch it. There you see the score, 747 left in the half. The other team in that top four, Class 5A, of course, Lake City, Columbia. You talk about how tough 5A is. Ooh. Lake City, Columbia, when they were defeated by Rutherford in the jungle at Lake City's place, first time in five years they had lost at home in a playoff game. And then when they took on Kissimmee Osceola, another unbelievable team, they had snapped a Kissimmee Osceola 19-game winning streak. Now Rutherford going against a Lakeland team that is revved up, leading 10 to 6. And they will start first and 10, Will Rutherford, from the 12-yard line. Yeah, they're jacked right now on the Lakeland side. The crowd's into it. The special teams are into it. The defense is into it. Rutherford needs to come back out, do what got them there, do what worked for them early on in the running game and establish the line of scrimmage for the offense. The young quarterback, Matt Harden, now he's a freshman. He's got to come in here and direct this offense. Remember, they've only lost once this year, and they have not lost in the state of Florida. It was to a team out of Alabama, Lanier High School. So uh, they, they have not lost within the state of Florida. And they hardly ever lose at home. Flag on the play, movement on the offense before the play. When they play at Tommy Oliver Stadium, 27 straight wins for Rutherford when they play in Springfield. That's yeah, not that's, too bad. That's a, that's, and, and that 27th win, was a very, very, very tough one to get over Osceola a week ago. Ball to start on the offense. They were trailing Five in yards, that game. Still first to, down. 20 to 14. And that is a team that everybody thought would be here. And again, a year ago, everybody thought Lakeland would be their their opponent, and they didn't quite make it. A sterile upset them. And now Lakeland's here, and everybody thought Osceola would be here, <laughs> and they came up one week short with the outstanding running back, Willie Green. Lakeland is just two plays away from being in the state championship three straight years. First and 15, and the handoff to Griggs, and he is taken down behind the line of scrimmage, and the big mo momentum is in the favor of Lakeland right now. That was Josh Phillips, the six-foot senior. You know, emotion plays such a big part in how well you play on defense, and we talk about Rutherford's defense, but this team right here, Lakeland, 
Their defense is playing with emotion. Look how many orange jerseys are in the backfield. And that is emotion. Football is a big game of emotion, but defense is especially about emotion. If you play hard every snap and play with emotion on defense, you got a chance to make plays, and they are jacked up on Lakeland sideline right now. They are all bunched up at the line, and now they back off to the linebackers. Handoff, Briggs. He's taken down near the goal line. Will this be a safety? No, they're going to say his momentum was stopped at the one-yard line. Very nearly a safety by Lakeland's Josh Phillips. But the one yard line is the spot of the ball. Boy, Rutherford's offensive line is just getting whipped. Here's the buck sweep out of the end zone. And they come with the number 99, Chauncey Clark off the end, the defensive end. The junior forced that, forced Griggs in the back to watch right here now. The tight end's got to block that guy. He didn't get the kick out block right there from the play side guard. I believe that's number 50. Daniel Brown didn't get the kick out block, and that, that, that really just messed everything up. Chauncey Clark, number 99, disrupting that play. Some confusion on the Rutherford sidelines. On third down, the punting unit was out. Not sure if Steve Harden just wanted to avoid the potential for a safety and kick it on third, or if there was an actual mistake made and they lost track of down. Steve Harden doesn't look happy either way. We'll take a timeout. Lakeland leading Rutherford 10-6. Log on to sportschannelflorida.com for the best in Florida sports. Send email to your favorite announcers, link to Florida's professional and collegiate teams, and participate in interactive polls and chats. Log on today, sportschannelflorida.com. And coming out of the timeout with 6-11 left in the first half, I think Steve Harton said, how did we lose track of the downs? Yeah, and, and, and that, that is hard to do. Uh, so there's confusion. They're rattled. Rutherford is rattled on their side. Their offense is rattled. Their offensive line is getting whipped right now. And Lakeland's got a lot of momentum, and they're really backed up. Third down. They need to get to the 21-yard line. Pass by Harden is intercepted. Great defensive play, but he's out of bounds. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I got to see this one again. I've got to see this one again. Kareem Taylor made the nice kickoff return earlier. Watch this now. It's a fade route into cover two. So the safety's going to come over and give help to the corner. Now watch him. Watch him get over there. Up. Ball. Oh, what a catch. Let's see if he gets his feet in. Oh, my. He was in. He got both feet in. 10,000 fans from Lakeland agree with you. Oh, he got both feet in. Clearly got him in. See him? He got, he's got possession of the football. He has possession of the ball and a foot in. That was an outstanding play by Kareem Taylor. Here's a punt caught at the 40-yard line. Moving to his left is Lorani Galishaw taken down at the 35. If we get a chance, curious to see that replay one more time, because watch his hand. I think his foot does come down first, but his hand was coming down almost oh. simultaneously. I think the ref was looking at the ball. But watch the hand. Does the hand hit first? The foot's down right okay, there. You're the right. The foot's down. He's down. If he calls it for the hand, he's one of the, the, the you, you need to join his fan club. Foot down. He's in. You're right. Foot down. He, he blew the call. I think he was looking at the receiver's body instead of his feet. The trying ball. Because he's trying to find out if he has possession of the ball. Bottom line is they have the ball great, basically at the same spot anyhow. Here's a fine dive catch but incomplete Kobe it couldn't come up with it at the 22 well they do have it but Kareem Taylor and his family they want credit for the interception so on Sports Channel you get credit for the interception you just won't get it in the stat sheet tomorrow in your local paper there you go at the 35 yard line Kobe almost made a great catch Kobe is a kid going to the University of Miami well they have an outstanding tight end this year in Bubba Frank so if you want to play tight end he's obviously probably gonna come out and go pro but that's a good offense to play tight end in. Kedrick Frazier still looking for his first completion. Oh, first, first six. Hand off to Johnny Mack. Johnny Mack at the 20, at the 10. Johnny Mack diving for the pylon. Out of bounds at the half yard line. Oh, is this kid quick. Oh, my goodness, Johnny. You're so nasty. What a move that was right there. I am just, I, I can't, I have never seen anyone do this on film all year in Rutherford's defense. And this guy is special. Watch this. Watch how he stutters. He, he goes from 4-4 to 4-4 without even missing a beat right there. He never misses a beat. Running away from the best defense in the state this year in Class 5A. Here you see him. See how he reads his blocks? Looked like he was going to go left, then he goes right, then he makes that guy miss. 
That's peripheral vision, and that's outstanding speed. That's what that is. And now going over the top is the quarterback taking it himself. Kedrick Frazier with a touchdown for Lakeland. Wow. All this without Johnny Jones. <laughs> They're not ranked number six in USA Today for nothing. The sixth ranked team in the nation leading 16 to six. Yeah, let the young kid get a touchdown right here and he goes in. Good job of having two hands over the ball. And again, one point I will make in defense of this outstanding defense of Rutherford, they've been on the field not only a lot in this second quarter, but they've also had to play on their side of the field. And uh, when you have to defend 40 yards a turf, not only is it easier to call plays on offense, but it's also tougher for the defense to go right back out there and see that they're at their own 35. But Lakeland's got it rolling right now, and Rutherford needs something big to happen, or this thing could get away from them. Rutherford had the advantage in field position early in the game, but Lakeland, as you mentioned, certainly has taken control of that. 17 to 6, 531 to go in the first half. Terry Norvell down on the field. What do you have for us, buddy? Okay, guys, it's really a moot point because Lakeland took the ball and scored, but on that interception that was not, talking to a couple of officials, the ruling may have been that uh, the defender had his last plant foot on the line. He established himself out of bounds, went in the air and uh. touched the ball, came down inbounds. That was kind of the explanation that he established himself out of no. bounds by his final jump. That's what they told me, right or wrong. That's what they went with. Yeah, and, and they were completely wrong. If you want to tell them while you're down there, Terry. Will do. They, okay, because they, they were completely wrong. And also, completely wrong, but it didn't matter. Yeah. Like, like Terry said, it's a mute point or, or a moot point, other than the fact that my man Kareem Taylor's not going to get credit for an INT because it was a pick. Well, I think he's got enough credit down from us, so maybe he'll be happy when he watches this replay. Yeah. <laughs> it's 17-6 to 6 Lakeland. Rutherford, as mentioned by Mr. Ackerman, needs something here before the half to Boy. get a spark going in the halftime. And, and they're not a team that likes to open it up, although they have a, a you know, a, a, a kid who's, a, even though he's a freshman, is a smart quarterback. And you may want to use one of your trick plays right here to get something going. They just can't get the field position. But here's Javon Baker trying to give them field position. Baker all the way to the 43-yard line. Fine return by the senior. That's what you need. A big play. Get it out towards midfield. Now with five minutes and 15 seconds left in the half, you can stay within your offense. If, if you're backed up on the 10 again, I'm saying you might want to spread it out and try something different. But right now, you could stay in within the realm of your offense and get something going. Watch it now. How many times have we seen fumbled kicks and punts and bobbled turn into big plays? And there you see Javon Parker making a huge run. First down and 10 for the Rams at the 43-yard line. Harden hands it off. Jonathan Griggs left side, not going very far, maybe three yards. The Lakeland defense has been very tough lately. Yeah, they have, and they've been playing with a lot of emotion. But, uh, you know, one thing you need to remember is that uh, this game could change on anything, and it's still only 17-6, to six, and we haven't even gotten to the half. So Rutherford needs some positive yards and some positive plays for them right now and, and and that was a good gain on first down because that's the first positive game they've had in their last five running plays so now they're now they can get back in within the realm of their offense second down harden to throw fires incomplete should have been caught pass dropped at the 46 yard line chris chandler the tight end and a penalty as well this might be declined by lakeland and set up third down and six or seven now they are going to walk it off, it looks like. A dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yards, still second down. Well, so much for the positive yards on first down. And Coach Harden, after taking the early lead at 6 nothing, as you see Coach Castle right there for Lakeland, he's got his defense just jacked. Coach Harden right now can't get anything right to go for him. Even after the big return by Parker, he still can't get anything to go in his way, at least not so far. Ball start is accepted. Second down and along 11. Back to throws. The freshman Matt Harden throws high intended for his tight end Chandler. And it looked like Chandler to me was looking to get hit instead of looking to make the catch, although it was a little high, as you said, Todd. And Chandler's looking a little shaky right now at the tight end position. And that's the first time we've seen shotgun. 
They're going to throw a little flat route to Chandler, the big tight end. High snap. Good job by the freshman. He checks downfield. Notice how he took his eyes off the last minute. I don't know if you thought there was somebody coming, but again, like you said, though, it was a little high for Matt Harden. And he needs to get it down. And there's so much emotion and so much electricity out there. Guys get so excited, especially the quarterback position. And, and, and when you're a when you're a running team, as both these teams are, and you're called on to throw, you have to tone it down a little bit. I mean, to run it and to run the option and to run the handoff and run the offense, you can do that with a lot of energy. But throwing the ball, you need to be able to control and be poised. After a 10-yard penalty marked off against Lakeland, it's now second down and one, and that should be a first down as Chauncey Clark, the outstanding defensive left end, jumped over the line. He's pointing at an offensive lineman. And that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> you know, they tell you point, point, point. Now he's pointing at himself. And now that he knows the officials have called on him, he taps himself on the chest and says, my bad. And this is a big break right there that, it, you know, I just missed that penalty right there as we were describing the tight end. On the defense. And now another penalty. penalty. First down. So back-to-back -back penalties by Lakeland has kind of jump-started a little bit at this Rutherford offense. At least it's gotten them into Lakeland territory. Let's see if they can do something with it here in the second quarter. So the first down now puts the ball at the Lakeland 43, four minutes to go. You see the score, the number one team in 5A and the number one team in the state of Florida, the Lakeland Dreadnoughts leading 17 to six. The Rams scored first, Rutherford leading six nothing, but 17 unanswered by the Dreadnoughts. That's the big pullback, Johnny Jackson on first down, gaining about three to the 40. Ooh, this uh, number one, Isaac Jackson didn't make the tackle, but he really forced this play on this last play right here. Number one, he comes flying in. We've been telling you about everybody uh, about the hits on the Rutherford defense and some of the hits on Lakeland. Watch him fly in here and take out the lead back. Bam! Right there. Forces. He actually does get credit for that tackle. He tripped up the running back. Isaac Jackson just coming in with a reckless abandon right there from his linebacker spot. Second down seven. They need to get to the 33-yard line. Harden back to throw. Throws to the left side. Complete. Javon Barker across the 30 to the 28-yard line. First down for the Rams. Good teams capitalize on opportunities, turnovers or penalties, special teams turnovers, and Rutherford is capitalizing on those two straight penalties by Lakeland getting it inside their 30-yard line. Parker looks a little, little gimpy. That is, that is their leading receiver, Javon Barker. 34 catches, 617 yards. And that would be a big blow to the Rams if he is not able to play. Yeah, it looks like he might have just got a twisted ankle or something, and hopefully he can. And he's having a hard time putting weight on it right now. And here you go. It's his right ankle. He catches a curl route. There you see it. See it get rolled up under there right there? I believe that's Isaac Jackson that rolled up on it. See it get caught underneath there, his right ankle? And uh, it looks worse than sometimes it'll result in. Right now, he's going through some initial pain. They'll probably have to pull the tape off and retape it. Uh, if he can't put weight on it then, then he will have to get ice and elevation, and that would mean he'd be lost for the game. Mike Jones and Derek Patterson, now the receivers. The pitch back to Jonathan Briggs, and he is taken down for a big loss. Penalty flag comes down. Mandrell Butler with the tackle. Boy, they, Lakeland is shooting themselves in the foot defensively on this drive. They're still playing with emotion, but their emotion is causing them penalties and, and, and the mistakes. And as you see Mandrell Butler right there, he is just going to fly in here on the toss sweep and make the tackle. But he face masked the running back right there, and that'll, that'll cost him. So what was a big defensive play, a huge defensive play, watch it right here. Watch Butler from a strong side linebacker spot get past the fullback's block and tackle Griggs for what would have been a 12-yard game. But see, he just got enough of the helmet right there with his hand, and that's a good call by the referees, and I'll set up first and short. So they're playing with emotion still. The defense is still flying around, but that emotion needs to be tempered a little bit because it's cost them with some, you know, some dumb penalties. Five penalties, 45 yards for Lakeland. Only two penalties on Rutherford thus far. The Rams have first and two from the 20-yard line. Jackson has the first down. Johnny Jackson inside the 15, knocked down at the 13-yard line. 2.27, clock stopped to move the chain. And let's look at all this drive, how it started. I mean, you talk about five penalties, but three have come in the last two minutes of this drive. 
and this drive started, we said that all the emotion was on Lakeland's side. Well, you got Barker with the huge kick return. Then it looks like Rutherford's going to get stopped to get two penalties. Then it looks like Rutherford's going to take a 15-yard game to get another penalty. So those kind of things are allowing Rutherford to possibly get back into this thing. Patterson and Jones, the receivers. Instead, it's Griggs, the tailback, taking the handoff. And on the left-hand side, gaining a couple. Mondrell Butler again in there on the tackle. And Griggs is a tough cookie, but he's taking some shots out there from this Lakeland defense. You see Harden coming back to the huddle, goes over and gets the play and comes back to the huddle. And with their kicking game, you got to figure it's a four down territory, you would think, for mm -hmm. Rutherford down here in the red zone. But they need to come away with some points. It's getting late in the first half. Back to throw, pass complete to the five. Knocked down inside the five of the four, Mike Jones, the senior wide receiver. And he's a guy that's going to have to step up. I mean, he's got, you know, his partner on the other side, on the sideline right now with the bad ankle. Mike Jones runs a little out route. Look at it. Throw. Nice throw on time over the coverage. The linebacker trying to drop into his zone right there. Antoine Denson. Nice throw by Harden, throwing it on time into coverage as soon as number eight right there, Mike Jones, comes out of his break. There was the ball. That's the way you coach it up. That's the way it's supposed to be executed. And there's not many defenses that can stop that if you execute it to that extent. Measurement and just shy. It'll set up a third down and very short for the Rams. We talked about Matt Harden being only a freshman. His brother Blake, quarterback, this 97 Rutherford team, where the Rams were undefeated and favored to beat St. Thomas Aquinas, but the Raiders came away in a big 13-10 game for that state championship in 97. And Blake was the 5A player of the year as a junior uh, that year. And uh, they had Will Witherspoon, who played at Georgia. An awfully good team that year. As you see the current drive now, they've eaten up some time off this clock in very Rutherford-like fashion, but it's been held by a couple of penalties and mistakes by Lakeland, but they need to try to get some points here and punch this in before the half. Flag down as Harden takes it himself. Uh, they're gonna, and, and, and the back judge is gonna call it on the quarterback, and uh, boy, that's a tough call, okay? He's trying to put his hands under center and as, and as soon as he touches the center, and I, I I might be with you on this one, Coach Harden. Watch this now. This is not a snap count. See, he's just waiting. As soon as he puts his hands under center and presses forward, the center snaps it. Nobody else knows when it snapped. There's no snap count. Watch. Press. And he dropped his foot back, and that dropped foot is what he called a motion penalty. The problem is, how can the back judge see when the ball is snapped? and not know that it hadn't already been snapped. So I, I disagree with the call. I think it's a guy just trying to call penalties right there. I, 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 you know, that is a good, well-coached, well-done, well-thought-out quarterback sneak. And he gets penalized because all the referee sees right there is the guy's foot moving, never even sees the ball. So instead of third down and a half yard, third down and a long five. And the throw hard and throws, complete touchdown, penalty flag down. Touchdown to Jonathan Griggs. We'll wait for the flag in the end zone. Maybe a holding on the defense. There it is. One of the receivers tried to get by on the slot. And that is a huge touchdown. Defense. Penalties decline. Touchdowns. Good. Jonathan Griggs having to do it all right now. And Matt Harden stepping up big as a freshman quarterback in his first state title game. Watch this now. A little play action. He slips the back out. Right there, Jonathan Griggs, and nobody there for the touchdown. Very nice design play. See the play action right there? They think run, and he slips the back out. And that's a good job of Griggs going at the defensive lineman like he was going to block him and then slip passing for the completion. And Harden is celebrating as the Rams are back in this one. We had one of our camera guys down on the field who just barely got missed by that tackle, and instead, Henry Jerkins got missed, our guy, but then instead, Griggs got nailed right into the female photographer, so. Come on, Henry. Chivalry is dead. Come on, Henry, but push the move. girl in front of him. Good move by Henry, but she got nailed. I don't know if we have a chance to see it again. All right, here Watch it is, this. look at Henry. Come on, oh, he sidestepped him. 
Henry must have played soccer in high school. Nice move down there in the goal. Look how tough she is. She says, that's no, that ain't no big deal to her. That ain't, that ain't no big deal to me. <laughs> she sees herself on the big screen. And she's a little embarrassed. Hey, Terry. No blood, I guess. For us down there. <laughs> Terry, you there? Hey, yeah, guys, I'll tell you one thing. Henry's my field camera guy. Yeah. And as I'm known to do, I was nowhere near potential <laughs> contact. I'll let you know about that for sure. You hang under those goalposts, don't you? <laughs> no action. You got it. <laughs> All right, Terry. Hey, they're going to go for two here, down by five, Brady. Good move early on. Oh, yeah, good move and, and get you down a field goal. And certainly their kicking game is suspect at best right now. So we'll see what happens. Down five, Harden rolling out. Being pursued, throwing from his knees and throwing incomplete. There was all kinds of pressure. Never got comfortable back there. His pass intended for Patterson was no good, so the two-point try is no good. 17-12 Lakeland, 54 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, and, and even though they didn't get the two-point conversion, I may have to rename my man Matt Harden, Doug Flutie. I mean, look at this young guy right here. He's just a freshman quarterback, people. Look at that pressure coming from that Lakeland defense. He makes two guys miss. He gets hit right there, and as he's going down, has the gumption to be able to get it off at least and try to give himself a chance to get the two-point play. Allah very Doug Flutie-like, even though he comes up short. A good stand, though, by the Lakeland defense not giving up the two and maintaining the five-point lead. 54 seconds to play in the half. Bill Castle will have a decision when he gets the ball back. He does have one timeout remaining and a five-point lead. It's Red Dogs have had one scare at Hillsboro during the playoffs, the 19-14 game, and Hillsboro actually led at the half. But Lakeland, other than that, had pretty smooth sailing. The Dreadnought Mobile was in full cruise control for their other three games. And this is a 14-0 team looking to go 15-0. The last two years, they've been knocked out on the final play of game. Once by Estero last year in the semifinal, a game that fans of Lakeland still can't believe they lost. And the year before, to St. Thomas Aquinas in the regional finals. And those were their only losses of the year. 46 straight regular season wins for the machine out of Lakeland and here coming back to the 34 yard line. Returning the kick is Lorani Galishaw. So Lakeland will have a decision, 48 ticks remaining and a timeout. Hand it to Johnny Max, what I would do. That's the only decision I think you have right now. You got a game breaker, number four, Johnny Mack, young quarterback who's, gu who's guided you to the lead at the half. If Mac was able to break one against his defense, then you then you may go in to hurry up. But other than that, I would I would not put the ball in the air with my young quarterback. Edric Frazier with Galashaw and Mac behind him in the eye, and he'll take a knee. Lakeland will be content to go into the locker room with a five-point lead. They may have to take a knee one more time, depending on when the ball is spotted. And it looks like they will. Both teams showed some resolve in this first half, Todd. I mean, you look out early, and the field position, as you said earlier, favored Rutherford. They got the 6-0 lead. They kind of looked like they were in control early on. Lakeland had nothing going with the young quarterback. And then Lakeland took it back with the 17 unanswered points until that last touchdown. So both teams have been on the ropes early in this game. The Rams coming back, the Knots coming back, and it's made for an exciting first half. Absolutely. It's going to be 17-12 heading to the locker room. The Dreadnoughts trailing 6-0, scored 17 straight to lead at 17-6. Rutherford making it a one-score game at 17-12 before the half. So Bill Castle riding 14 straight wins, heads to the locker room with a five-point lead in the 5A championship game. And before he gets to the locker room, he's going to stand by with our own Terry Norvell down on the field. Let's send it down to Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Okay, Todd, I'm with Bill Castle from Lakeland. Coach, it took you deep into the first quarter, but after the Taylor's big kickoff return, you finally turned field position. That seemed to be real big. Well, Phil, we, you know, we knew going in the game, field position is a big thing, and we did get field position, was able to make a couple of plays there offensively and get the ball moving a little bit. Talk about the uh, the counter reverse pass. Was that something you were go going to run, or did Rutherford do something defensively that made you think they were susceptible? We worked on that all year. It's just a little trick play right there on the re uh, reverse that we threw off and just so happened it was open. Quickly, Coach, you got real hot on offense, uh, put some points on the board, but a little disheartening that final drive. You helped them defensively with a lot of penalties. 
Yeah, we got to cut those out, and uh, you know, it's, it's uh, Rutherford's got a great football team, so uh, should be a great second half. We're gonna have to just uh, keep playing hard. Good job, Coach. Thank you. Hi, right, guys. Back up to you up top. All right, Terry. Good job. We're at halftime. 17-12. Dreadnought, the number one ranked team in the state of Florida, leading by five in the 5A championship. Back with some highlights, some stats, and some thoughts at halftime as we continue from Gainesville right here on Sports Channel. Welcome back to Gainesville for the second half of the Class 5A Championship. Lakeland leading Rutherford 17-12 as the captains meet at midfield, including Johnny Jones, who walks out there on crutches. Jones, the star quarterback for Lakeland, broke his ankle in the state semifinal game, not playing tonight, but so far, Kedrick Frazier has been able to get the job done running the option for the Dreadnoughts. Let's go down to the field and see what Terry Norvell has with Hi us. Hi, guys. Thanks, Todd. I've got Coach Harden here from Rutherford coming out for the second half. Coach, uh, first of all, your wide receiver, Barker, went out. What's his status for the second half? Uh, out. Broken, possibly broken ankle. Oh, tough news there. Obviously, Barker made a few plays in the first half. Talk about that first half. You popped Griggs early for a big touchdown. Then you really shut down offensively, really struggled. Well, we did the last drive, and we came back, and, and we had another drive. If you remember the opening drive, we didn't make a fourth down in six inches. We drove it right down the field, and, you know, that's something we've got to, you know, we've got to do, and we got to tackle better. We really had one bad play where we had to miss tackle. The, the reverse uh, for the touchdown on third and long, that's just a heck of a play by that receiver. They could do that 25 times, and I'm not sure they had completed, but that, you got to give the receiver a great uh, credit there. Quickly talk about that, that that last drive at the half. You're reeling down 11. How big was that going into the second half? Well, I just told them that. We've got the ball coming right now, and that drive right there just put us back in the game. We're down five. That's a touchdown. you got to score to win. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. There you have it. A big drive at the end of the first half gives them hope opening up here the first five minutes of the second half. Up top, guys. All right, Terry, and there you see crutches on the other sideline as well. We talked about Johnny Jones and now Javon Barker. Mm. Mm. There, there you see the cast on the right ankle. And, of course, we're not doctors, but we do see a lot of injuries. And, and when he, we first saw it, it looked bad, but sometimes ankle sprains will look bad. But what, I think what tipped it off was right when he couldn't put his foot back on the ground, the trainers tried to see if he could put some weight on it. When you can't put weight on it, usually a bad sprain, you could put some kind of weight on it and walk it off, and then they retape it, as we suggested earlier. But when he couldn't put any weight on it, that probably should have tipped us off. And that's a, that's a tough loss because he's a playmaker, certainly in his final game as a senior for the Rutherford Rams. So stepping up will have to be Derek Patterson and Mike Jones, the other receivers, as the kickoff for the second half, and we are underway. Jonathan Griggs with two touchdowns in the first half, one rushing, one receiving, and now on special teams, he takes it out to the 25. So Rutherford back out on offense with the freshman quarterback, Matt Harden. Harden in the first half of play, completed five of the six attempts he threw for 39 yards. Rutherford scoring two touchdowns, missing the extra point on the first touchdown, failing to convert the two-point conversion on the second. And I think the big key in the first half, another stat that we need to throw out there, is 60 yards worth of penalties by Lakeland, most of that coming on defense. We'll see if they got that corrected at halftime as well. First and 10, 25. Jones and Patterson will be your receivers now. This is the big fullback, Johnny Jackson, and Johnny Jackson doesn't go very far. Left side of the defensive line for Lakeland coming up big and Tommy Gunther comes off a lot of piles that middle linebacker. He sure does and we talk about games tight games championship games when are they won and lost when can you take control of them generally it happens either in the first five minutes of the game or, or, or this first five minutes of each half excuse me in the second half right now this first five minutes is key Rutherford's kind of feeling good about themselves can they go down and take the lead or will Lakeland stop them and get momentum back in their favor. Harden back to throw. Flush down in the pocket, throws on the move, drop. Mike Jones had it right in his chest and dropped. It would have been a first down. Wow, and then, I'm telling you, this kid is a freshman, and he has got the poise of a senior at the quarterback position. Harden right there. I mean, you could tell he's the son of a coach, and his older brother was a quarterback, a very good quarterback for Rutherford. Got a little pressure there and then just threw it out. I mean, that arm, that is a strong arm for a freshman. I can't, I mean, you're talking about a 13, 14 year old kid who's throwing it like a senior. I mean, I can only imagine when he's a senior, and that's a tough break as he puts it on the money, as you said to Mike Jones. These guys, these other receivers are going to have to step up. 
And he shows a lot of boys. And right there, he didn't like what he saw with only one second left on the play clock and calls a timeout. Could be costly down the stretch, but right there, he saved himself five yards. Well, I, I mean, to me, I would rather take the five early in the half. Uh, if I'm coaching my guys up, I'm telling them, okay, if you know, unless it's just completely the wrong play, I don't want to burn a timeout this early in the first half or this early in the second half when there's so much football to be played and this it, and it's a very tight game. I mean, those timeouts are very valuable. If you burn a timeout early, it better you better come out and have success. So, meaning if he burns the timeout and they come back out and pick up the third down, then I would think it was a good call. But if they don't pick it up or if they come out and run an off tackle play and decide to punt, then it was a wasted timeout that could come back to home. Bill Castle won a state championship in 86, then again 10 years later for Lakeland. Thought he should have been back in the state championship game the last two years. Final play losses in the regional finals two years ago in the state semifinals last year, but he has his dreadnoughts back playing for a championship again in 1999. And a lot of fans coming up north trying to make this Bryant Stadium north for the Lakeland dreadnoughts. It's got the color of it. A lot of orange in the building tonight. The fans, the setting, University of Florida's Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, third and nine. Rutherford back to throw under pressure. Throws out to the left side, complete, but taken down for a loss of a couple of yards. Jamie Farmer was hit by Mandrell Butler. Mandrell Butler, and now Harden is down. He took the huge shot there on the screenplay. Mandrell Butler can flat out run, but Harden, and the reason he has to take this hit, watch right here. This is a design screenplay to the back, and he has to hold it, he has to hold it, and he holds it to the last minute and takes a huge shot. And there's Mondrell Butler from his linebacker position making another tackle. This guy, I'm going to tell you one thing. He showed me something here. He's only 5'11", 196. I don't know where he is on the recruiting list, but he could flat out run and make tackles. And uh, I got to believe he could at least play at the next level as a strong safety. Uh, linebacker depending on you know I mean uh, what you're looking for but uh, certainly he, he can make a lot of plays and made a lot of them tonight Harden going off shaking up Jonathan from back to punt back deep for Lakeland Isaac Jackson also back there for Ronnie Gallishaw Gallishaw will let it bounce and it goes past the 35 yard line and right on the 35 yard line so the dreadnoughts will take over first and 10 from their own 35. Rutherford loses their star receiver Javon Barker now they'll have to check on the status of their starting quarterback Matt Harden. Yeah he might have just had the wind knocked out of him a little bit a little slow getting up but certainly Advantage Lakeland right now as we start the third quarter. You have the five-point lead. You come out, you stop them. You also make them burn a timeout. So now they're one timeout short as you go into the latter points of the game. And you have good field position for your young quarterback. See if they made any adjustments with him uh, at the half to try to get some more running game going. Pedrick Frazier hands off to Johnny Mack. Johnny Mack with a burst of speed across the 40 to the 42-yard line. We talked about speed all day long. We talked about Jonathan Griggs and Johnny Mack. Also, Terry Norvell showing good speed. He's already been to the sideline to check on Harden and back, so we'll get a report on Matt Harden in just a second. Good pickup of six yards by Johnny Mack on first down. Yeah, and I can't tell you how impressive this is. He is over 80 yards for the game. And Johnny Mack is doing this against the state's toughest and stingiest defense. 100 yards a game. They're giving him 105 yards a game offensively. That is, and defensively, that's impressive. Here's Mack again trying to stutter step and actually trips himself up for a gain of nothing. Right back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and four. That interior part of the defensive line, as you see in there, Lonnie Creighton, David Atwell, Mark Tibbs. The big fellas, those are the ones that make it go against the run. And uh, a good stop for no game for Rutherford. Now you got a third and five. And another big play on, de on defense. And right now in this game, the longer it goes, every play becomes a big play. Need to get to the 45-yard line. Frazier, big drop, throws, complete, and a big stop oh by the goodness. Rutherford Rams defense. Reed Fleming made the initial hit on what could have been a big gainer on the left side. That would have been a huge play, but not to be as number 82 Reed Fleming from his linebacker position makes the play on the screen pass and forces Lakeland to punt. 
Watch it now. You're inside linebacker play side. You get the fake draw, so it's fake run. Now he reads pass. He sees all the linemen pulling, gets past the block right there on Gallishaw and makes the tackle. George Lott could not get over to make the block. And again, Reed Fleming coming up with a huge play on that Rutherford defense. All right, taking over on offense will be Rutherford after the punt. Let's get an update from Terry Norvell about the quarterback. All right, everything is fine with Matt Harden, Rutherford's quarterback, number 11. He took a helmet to the right elbow, his throwing elbow, on that screen pass. A little bit sore, but it should not affect his play or keep him out of the ballgame. Nothing serious, guys. Thanks, Terry. And coming back, you see number 11 right there. He's a tough cookie. I mean, to start as a freshman, you got to be tough. To be playing in a state championship as a freshman with a 12 and 1 record, you got to be awfully tough. Axe in the eye behind the freshman. He hands off to the second back. That is Griggs, and Griggs goes nowhere. A sea of orange piling him up near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they can't. They, they can't get anything going in the running game right now. At least not interiorly. They've tried the the base plays and the in the draw plays, and now the, now they've run a draw play and. They're just not getting any push up there in the inside of the line. The offensive line's kind of struggling here to start the second half, at least interiorly. They may want to go back to maybe some, some sweep plays or something outside. Let's see if they don't change up a little bit. Maybe try to get the big fella Griggs outside. Josh Phillips is having a fine game for Lakeland defensively. They're coming in just missing the tackle, but there's Phillips once again, 56. Coming in early was John C. Clark to disrupt the play and Phil polished it off. They tried to go outside. They tried to toss sweep, but John C. Clark, number 99, the junior, the outstanding junior defensive end, had no part of it. Look at him. He not only beats the block of the tackle, but he also beats the block of the fullback, forcing Griggs inside and on the tackle. 99, you're going to hear his name in a lot of college lists coming in the next year as a senior. 99, Chauncey Clark. Leading tackler as a junior, and he has been a disruptive force all game long. Back goes hard to throw. Under pressure. He is wrapped up and taken down at the two-yard line. John Phillips once again. The defensive line has really taken over for Lakeland in this third quarter. Any momentum Rutherford had going into the half offensively is gone. Here you'll see them both defensive linemen using the swim move, getting pressure, and wrapping up the quarterback for the sack. Big number 56, Josh Phillips, six foot, only 191 pounds. They list him at. He looks a little bigger now, but he's awfully quick. And now Rutherford's backed way up. Bill is putting together a huge championship game for the Dreadnought. This ball hits Lakeland at the 32-yard line. That's where it should be spotted. It rolls all the way to the 40. Rutherford hit the ball at the 32. It's a 57-yard punt if it stands there. The referees are conferring right now. It actually hit a Rutherford player, so it should be spotted back where it hit the Ram player, but we'll see what happens. We've got one official at the 39. We've got one official at the other 32, or the 34. We're bringing it back in favor of Lakeland, it looks like. Yeah, the ball is down by contact when it hits the kicking team's jersey. First touching or, on the yeah, black paint. Touching. First anytime, down. anytime it's touched by the kicking team, it's down. Good job by the officials, too, getting that one right, because a couple of them there saw it, it right off the knee of Laredo Jin. That is a, a, a nice call, and it'll put now, boy, is that a big swing. That would have been a huge punt, a 57-yarder coming back, resulting in a 30-yarder in good field position for this Lakeland offense. Three receivers in there for Lakeland, Javari Sanders, also the tight end. Kyle Kobe on the right side, Josh Smith. Instead, they hand it off to the up back, and that is Lorani Galishaw going for about a yard and a half on first and ten. Great field position again for the Dreadnoughts, leading 17-12, six minutes remaining in the third quarter. You can kind of feel this game kind of stalling right now, waiting for one team to grab it and take it and run with it. Lakeland does have the lead. And he has the ball in Rutherford's territory, so you would think they would be the obvious choice, but Rutherford's defense is so good, they can turn it around themselves. 
On the option, pitch back to a wide open Johnny Mack inside the 20, knocked out of bounds at the 17. I like it. I like to play out of the double slot or double wing formation, the old Georgia Southern look offense when they used to have the hand bone. See the two slot backs, the two wing backs. Now they're going to run the trap option to the boundary, nonetheless. Nobody for the pitch, and Johnny Mack knows what to do with it in open field. That trap option is so tough to play. you got to be disciplined. You have to have somebody on the fullback, somebody on the quarterback, and somebody on the pitch, and nobody got to the pitch that time. Even 100 yards for Johnny Mack on 10 carries for Ronnie Gallagher will walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Lakeland. Huge hole up the middle on the Dreadnoughts lead, 23-12. Wow. But Ronnie Gallishaw, that was an opening. <laughs> that was an opening for a touchdown. Watch it now. Here it is, the trap, the kick out block by big number 55, Dontrell Stills. LaRonnie go over and pat 55 on the helmet. That was a huge kick out block. Watch, watch 55. They're going to kick out the defensive tackle. Bam! Runs him right out of there. Number 30, David Atwell, and nothing but clear sailing for LaRonnie Gallishaw. Extra point is good. The trap play takes advantage of aggressive defenses. Rutherford has an aggressive defense, and you won't hit the trap every time. But big number 55, Dontrell Stills, made the block, and LaRonnie Gallishaw made the score. And now Lakeland's got a little breathing room here in the third quarter. Lakeland leading by a dozen, 24 to 12. Could have sailed one of those big dreadnoughts that you see a lot on the sidelines. They couldn't bring it up here from Lakeland this time. They had the Lakeland Mobile, but they don't have the big dreadnought ship. Well, they had it, but they couldn't get it on the field. <laughs> couldn't get it on the field. During halftime in this 5A championship, they honored the top players and coaches from Class A through 6A, the Florida Dairy Florida Farmers Gary Association. Farmer. Football coach and of the, the year for the state of coach Florida. Of the year was Milton Watson of Glade Central High School. Our, our buddy Milt Watson from Glade Central winning his second straight title today, earlier. Let's go down to the field and talk with Milt Watson, Terry Norvell. We are with Coach Watson from Bell Glade. And, Coach, the phrase, icing on the cake, is never more uh, perfect for you. Your team wins your second state title, and you're named Coach of the Year. What about it? Yeah, I'm extremely uh, thankful and gratified that, you know, someone thought enough of me to, you know, select me as a Coach of the Year. And, you know, hats off to all the other uh, you know, recipients in the, in the other classes. You know, I'm, I'm I'm just real proud. Coach, one of only five schools, I believe, in the state of Florida to win 100 or more games in this decade. I mean, Bell Glade's starting to put their name and your name all over the record book. Well, you know, it goes out, you know, I, I just got to thank God and thank our kids because they really play hard, and I can't say enough about our assistant coaches. And, you know, last but not least, we got the probably the best fans in the whole United States. Coach Watson, congratulations on your second state championship and your award. You deserve it. Thanks for having me. Okay, Todd Brady, this guy is, I mean, it's turning into a every year occurrence here with Coach Watson. You guys are regular conversationalists <laughs> down there. You guys are getting, you guys going to dinner afterwards? I mean, goodness gracious, they're always hanging out. But Milt Watson certainly, boy, maybe the college coaches, of college jobs may come calling him as good of a job as he's done down at Glade Central. And he's given us some excitement the last two years. Great game against Madison County last year. Another great game earlier today. First down, handoff to Johnny Jackson goes for a couple. It'll be second down. Yeah, and there's certain points in, in, in football games where it either gets away from you or you make something happen and you get back in it and you get this tide turned in your favor. And right now, Rutherford's in one of those situations. You're standing on the end of the dock and you're either going to get knocked in or you're going to come back in to dry land, and this is where it's going to happen for Rutherford. That somebody's got to step up and make a play offensively. Out of the shotgun, Harden loses control of the snap, and he is rolled up at the eight yard line. Number 99. We've talked a lot about Josh Phillips, but this time it's Chauncey Clark from the left side. Yeah. Chauncey Clark has made a lot of plays tonight, but this one was a result of a bad snap. And you know, there's a freshman mistake right there. Now he makes a good job, uh, makes a good play by getting on the ball, not trying to pick it up and run with it. But he tried to catch it, see, right there with one hand. You gotta go at it with two hands. You gotta try to, even though it was a, a bad high snap to the right side, Harden, just a freshman, has gotta get both hands up on the ball each and every time there's a shotgun snap, regardless of where it's at. And, uh, and, and now they're in a deep hole third. 
way long. And they had the play clock running down again. Jonathan Griggs came into the huddle late, so they call a timeout their second of the half. Timeout on the field, 4.07 to go in the third. The Dreadnought from Lakeland leading the Rams from Rutherford, 24-12. We are back in Gainesville, University of Florida's Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Glad you could join us on Sports Channel Florida, the home of all the FHSA championships. In this one, the 5A championship, Lakeland, the number one ranked team in the state of Florida, and number six in the nation by USA Today, leading 24-12. Harden in some trouble, fumble. This is going to be a safety or a touchdown. It's a touchdown for Lakeland. The Dreadnoughts, number 99, Chauncey Clark. He and Josh Phillips have been huge from the left side, and they score six. Well, I just talked about making a play to get back into it, and Lakeland's defensive line has dominated the second half, has made a play to put this thing in a huge deficit. Watch right here. Look at the pressure up the middle. It's stripped by number 56, Josh Phillips. And then Chauncey Clark knows what to do, pouncing on it for the touchdown. 56, Josh Phillips, another guy who we've called his name a lot in the second half has dominated the interior part of that Rutherford offensive line. And then Chauncey Clark, boy, the, I mean, those two guys lined up next to each other. Well, that's got to be a nightmare, and it has been for Rutherford all second half especially. 31 to 12 dreadnoughts. The defensive line on the left side simply dominating Chauncey Clark and Josh Phillips. They have been as good as you could hope for in this game. And then... Again, there's a lot of time left in this football game, and it may look bleak right now, but if you're the starting quarterback at Rutherford over there and you're the freshman, you got to pick it up a little bit, stay positive, and see if you can get some points on the board and get back into it. A lot of time left. Just a moment ago, we heard from the coach of the year, named by the Florida Dairy Farmers, and now for the player of the year announcement. Florida Mr. Football Award for 1999, Willie Green of Kissimmee Osceola High School. Willie Green, we saw him last year in the state championship game out of Kissimmee Osceola. He's down on the field with Terry Norvell. That's right, guys. I'm with Willie Green, the Dairy Farmers Mr. Football for 1999 from Kissimmee Osceola. Willie, I know that it's a great award. You're very proud. I'm not taking anything away from the award, but I know you'd rather have those pads on tonight. Well, that's more definitely, you know, because we um, lost to a good football team. You know, I can't be too mad about it, but, you know, I kind of wish I was playing out there tonight because, you know, that doesn't look like the same team we played last week. Talk about the Dairy Farmers Mr. Football Award. You know the history. Some great players have had their name put on that award. Now Willie Green goes on that award as well. What does that mean to you? Well, it means a lot to me, you know, because I have a lot of fans and friends and stuff, and now they can always look back and, you know, say, hey, my friend or my cousin or something was part of that award right there, and it makes me feel real special, you know, because I came out and did some great things over the last four years. Okay, fellas up in the booth, uh, you're not seeing him wearing pads and a helmet tonight, but I guarantee you the next four years you'll see this guy on the tube a lot playing football. All right, guys, back to you. Thanks, Terry, and what an accomplishment, not only this season for Willie Green, but over the course of the year, 107 touchdowns, surpassing Emmett Smith's record that a lot of people who watch high school football for a lot of years thought would never be broken when Emmett scored 106 for a Scambia. Yeah, he's a special player. I mean, he runs a lot like Emmett, too, low to the ground. We were fortunate enough to see him last year as Kid Simi Osceola won the state title and uh, came up one game short. And it was interesting hearing him say that this doesn't look like the same Rutherford team. And one reason may be because Rutherford was at home last week. And some teams just play better at home and, 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 and drive some energy. The other reason is this is a very good Lakeland football team. And, and, and don't take anything away from them. They have dominated the second half. Negative 34 yards offense for Rutherford in the second half. That defense has just been sensational. Tell you what, during that last little timeout while Terry was talking to Willie Green, watched on the sidelines, it's both Chauncey Clark and Josh Phillips, and there's another incomplete pass and a plant into the ground. Great hit by Sean Fuller. He's only a sophomore for Bill Castle. Oh, and the Lakeland symbol comes up. Used to be kind of the choo-choo train symbol. Now it's the L. Watch it right here. Another drop, and that's really hurting. And then compounding it, another hit. And right now the team making the big hits and making the big plays is a team that's way ahead, and that's Lakeland 31 to 12. And really, you got if you're a Rutherford right now, you, you've got to dig down deep and find something. Somebody has to step up and make a play. And, they don't even, you know, you don't even have Jonathan Griggs in the game. He's probably been your only playmaker tonight. 
Barker's out. He's hurt. Straight pass set up to Jamie Farmer over the middle across the first down marker by a couple of yards at the 37-yard line. So Rutherford with a big third down pickup right there. And the two-minute 59 second mark down by 19. They needed something desperately. Yeah, good play by Farmer, out, but also a good play by Matt Harden. Watch him. He's going to take another shot. He's got to hold on to the ball. Bam, he gets a lick right there by Isaac Jackson, number one, but he gets it off. And the freshman quarterback gets back up, but boy, he's taking a punishment tonight. He's a tough cookie, though. He gets right back up and gets under center. Ball is loose on the ground. Is it another turnover for Lakeland? We'll wait for the pile. And no, they say it is Lakeland's ball, second down. Starting to say earlier during that little break, watching Chauncey Clark and Josh Phillips on the sideline, those guys kept talking and giving each other high fives. They're having a lot of fun on the left side of the defensive line. It looked like Clark came up with that fumble. How's that not Lakeland's ball? Ooh, that's close right there. And, and, and again, they're not even blocking Chauncey Clark. Watch this right here. Everybody blocks down. The fullback's responsible for the defensive end, and he whiffs right there for Rutherford. That should be a turnover. That's Jamie Farmer. And I, I don't know, you know, I don't know about that protection. If it was a pass play or run play, if you see him get a first down right here on a good play. But, uh, you know, I, I, I would think I'd put my tackle on the defensive end who dominated this second half of Chauncey Clark and leave my backs to block my linebackers. Watch it right here. Watch the right tackle. Now, he's blocking down. It looks like it's going to be a three-step drop where they, they hinge everybody in there tight. The problem is on a three-step drop like that, you've got the back on the end and in high school football you can't cut the end so you're asking a running back to block chauncey clark who's a dominating defensive end boy i don't know about that one. that last pass is good for a first down to reggie cox his first catch of the game this pass is overthrown intended for Derek patterson my only point on that was in, in, in finishing it up was even if he doesn't fumble the snap and i know we were looking at to see if he had gotten it if he takes a three-step drop, he's going to get hit anyway because Clark would have come unclean under that block. It was a poor angle taken by the running back, but certainly, uh, you know, you want to look, and if you see a guy dominating the game like Clark and Phillips are doing right now, you want to take your center and have him help out with the guard on Phillips. You want to leave that tackle on that, on, on that defensive end as much as possible. Johnny Jean, Aaron Harris have played solid games, but you're right, it's really been that left side that's done all the damage, Phillips and Clark. This is a little throw to the left side and another drop. This time, Jamie Farmer ruled incomplete. Lakeland thought for a second it might have been a lateral. Incomplete pass. He'll set up third down and 10. Yeah, and, and I've coached running backs in, in, in the college ranks, and, and the toughest thing to teach a kid to do is to catch a swing pass to his left. I've coached a lot of offenses where swing passes to both sides are very important, and this one's always the hardest one to catch. It's another. It's also the hardest one to throw, but Harden makes a nice throw, takes another shot from his pal Isaac Jackson. But watch, right out here, you see how he throws it just a little bit behind him. It's a tough catch to go behind you when you're running to your left, and, and conversely, it's a tough throw. So. It was a nicely designed play, but they couldn't come up with it. And Harden takes another shot. 129 to go in the third quarter. Third and 10. Harden throws for the sideline. Intercepted. Intercepted by Lakeland, heading down the sideline for a to the 10 yard line, looking for someone to lateral it. Is Dante Galloway, the 5'7 senior. Tackled inside the 10 at the 6, first and goal for the Dreadnought. And he saw the out. They ran the out to the field. And you better have a strong Dan Marino-like arm if you're going to throw the out into the field, across the field. And it was picked. He sat on it. Watch it right here. Okay, he's all the way over on the other hash. He's going to try to throw the out to the field. Look how much grass that is between the quarterback and the receiver. Too much grass right there between the quarterback and the receiver. And Galloway picks it off. Credit Harden with hustle and effort getting over there to save the touchdown, forcing back inside. But again, you do not need to throw the out. With a, and, and I know Harden's got a good arm for a freshman, but an out into the field usually spells doom if a quarterback wants to pick it off because the ball's in the air too long. Saving the touchdown. Reggie Cox coming back from his receiver position for the tackle. Johnny Mack takes the first down carry on first and goal and loses a couple of yards. It'll be second and goal from the eight. Talked about field position, how critical it was, and look at that in this ball game. The average start 
for Lakeland. The opponent's 42. That is tremendous field position. Caused by turnovers. And, and then when you have, when you, the, the, the bigger thing than that field position stat is turnovers. Here is Frazier up the middle. Kedrick Frazier fumbles into the end zone. And this is going to be a touchback for Rutherford. So just when it looked like Lakeland was about to go up by 25 points, a fumble and a touchback. Rutherford will take over first and 10 from their own 20. Wow, and, and, and that is, the, the defense is still playing hard in there. And as you see, a nice play, the trap option keep. The quarterback, it looks like Frazier's got a touchdown, but a huge hit right there by number 25, Michael Flun. Forces the fumble, and number 33, Laredo Jen, recovers it. Michael Flan, watch him right here. Bam! Right on the ball, too. That is some sticking. Well, we haven't seen Rutherford deliver a hit like that in a while, and maybe that'll jack him up here at the end of the third quarter and find some momentum from that. But uh, that saves a touchdown. And, and how fitting was it on defense, which has really been the strong point of this team this entire season. Frazier got up a little bit slowly after that hit, but he looks okay on the sideline. He is a big quarterback, taking over for the injured Johnny Jones. You see him holding kind of that right tricep area. Frazier's 5'7", 209. Let me tell you how tough this situation is for Rutherford, too. They, are, they like to run the football, and they're very good at running the football, but Lakeland has taken that away from them tonight. And on top of that, it's built a 19-point lead with just over a quarter to play. So they know they're going to throw it. And when guys like Phillips and Clark know you're going to throw it, and Isaac Jackson, it makes it tough on your quarterback and your offense to move the ball. Jackson up the middle. That'll be the final play of the third quarter. But before we go to the fourth quarter, let's hear from Terry Norvell. Terry? OK, Todd, just got uh, uh, done talking to Kedrick Frazier a moment ago on a very hectic sideline. Took a shot to his bicep, his right bicep. He told me it hurts, but he's fine. He will go back into the game. Frazier on the sideline talking to the other quarterback who was injured last week, and now he walks away. Johnny Jones with crutches, but how good is this Lakeland team? They don't have their star quarterback, and they're still leading big. 31 to 12 dreadnoughts. One quarter of football left to play in the 5A championship. We'll have it for you next right here on Sports Channel Florida. Final quarter of football in the Class 5A state championship. Rutherford with the ball, trailing 19. Harden throws knockdown. Guess who? Chauncey Clark. He has been immense tonight. Wow, he has just been everywhere. Nice play call right here. And, you know, you, you think about Rutherford. They've got one quarter of football. They need to score 20 points in one quarter of football and hold Lakeland to zero. And they need something magical to happen. But right there, the big fellow, the junior 99, Chauncey Clark, once again making his presence felt, knocking the pass down. In addition to the injury to Javon Barker in the first half, possibly a fractured ankle, now their star tailback, Jonathan Griggs, goes limping to the sideline. Griggs had 83 yards, his first six carries. In the second half, negative six yards on nine carries. Harden on the keeper up the middle, needs to get to the 30, can't quite get there on third down. So it'll be fourth and very short. This is the time of the game, down by 19, where you're probably going to see them go for it. Yeah, and quarterback draw out of the gun. Harden, a good athlete and a good runner with the football. We've already seen evidence of that tonight already. But a nice tackle by Isaac Jackson, who's number one. He's put his, uh, his name in the top of the tackle list here in the second half for Lakeland at the linebacker spot. That's right, raise the roof. He has made a tremendous amount of tackles here in the second half. Fourth down, Rutherford needs to get to the 30. Farmer is tackled from behind and stopped, and guess who from his left defensive end spot, Chauncey Clark. Boy, is he quick off the ball. I mean, he is cat quick off the ball. Chauncey Clark, number 99, only weighs 200. He's got to get a little bit more weight on him, but look at him beat the block right there by the right tackle, Clayton Crum. All you have to do at the tackle position right here is step flat, and make the block, and you've got the first down. And Crum right there stepped with his right foot first instead of his left foot. And a player like Chauncey Clark will make you pay for it if you aren't fundamentally sound. And that's one where Crum would like to have back. When you just have that little cutoff block like that, you've got to step with your play side foot, which would have been his left. He stepped with his right, and Clark made him pay, making the tackle to keep him short of the first down. 
Sports Channel Florida and Comcast Cable, our Panama City cable affiliate, would like to take this opportunity to remember a special team member of Rutherford High School, senior Danny Minke, age 17, son of Steve and Joanne Minke of Callaway. Danny was tragically killed in an automobile accident on Thanksgiving weekend. Danny, a member of the camera crew for this Rutherford Rams football team, a member of Rutherford's weightlifting team. In honor of Danny, Comcast and Sports Channel Florida will be setting up a $1,000 football scholarship in his honor. Fans making it down from Springfield, watching on as on the change of possession. Lakeland will hand the ball off to Johnny Mack on first down and 10. He doesn't go very far. This is a solid Rutherford Rams defense that is right now playing for pride with under 11 minutes to go, down by 19. They have had a great season defensively. Yeah, they really have. As I told you before, defensively, they've given up 7.1 points per game, 105 total yards. I mean, that is, uh, again, that is amazing in 14 games. And we've talked about some of that competition they played. Johnny Mack somehow got back close to the original line of scrimmage on a bobbled pitch. Should have lost five yards on it. Yeah, and you think about the Rutherford defense, you're going to see 31 points up there, but that's kind of a, a, a misnomer in that they've had to start on their, uh, Lakeland's had it several drives, as we said, their start in, in Rutherford territory. Their average field position is starting in Rutherford territory. They've got a fumble for a touchdown in the end zone off a quarterback sack. And I said at the outset of the broadcast that I thought this matchup right here on the field was a wash. I thought it would come down to who played better, Rutherford's offense or Lakeland's defense. And today, Lakeland's defense has really played better. No doubt about it. The junior Frazier fires over the middle complete. That is Cobia for a first down at the 16-yard line. Michael Flan with the hit. Kedrick Frazier, he has a lot of fun during practice. He and Johnny Jones, while he was healthy, would see who could throw the ball further. And Frazier said he always won by throwing it from his own 40 to the end zone. And here is a bullet throw. Yeah, just an isolation pass play. And he throws the dig route, throws it a little bit behind him. And that's why that guy is going to the University of Miami, because he can reach back and make the catch. Kyle Cobia, outstanding hands right there and going back over the middle. You know, you like guys who run routes over the middle and are not afraid to stick their hands up and make the grab. On the option, this is Frazier keeping it himself. Ankle tackled at the 10-yard line, a gain of about five on first down. You know, you come into this game and you see the newspaper clippings and you see all the, the, the media around this game, around the 5A state title game, and all of it talked about this Rutherford defense. I mean, all these players, Fleming and Tibbs and Creighton, and, and how many guys they had on it. And then it also talked about the Lakeland offense and how, much, how many points they've been put up. And I think the Lakeland defense has come out here and tried to make a statement tonight. And, 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 and other than the penalties at the end of the first half, they've really dominated this game since the first quarter. Second down and five. Lorani Galloway taken down after a gain of three. It'll be third down and short. Chauncey Clark, Josh Phillips have been huge. Tommy Gunther we called a lot in the first half, and Isaac Jackson has had a great second half. Those four have been the keys, but it has been a team effort defensively for the Nauts. Yeah, and on offense, credit the two guys right there we were showing you, Lerone Galishaw, number two, and Johnny Mack for shouldering some of the responsibility for the loss of their quarterback, Johnny Jones. I mean, you've got a young quarterback in there in Kendrick Frazier, and what you have to do is, as, a, as, a, as a, you know, a starting running back is shoulder load, step up, be a leader in the huddle, make him feel comfortable, and they've done that tonight. Mark Tibbs, the outstanding left tackle defensively for Rutherford, may have jumped. We'll see if he was induced. No, he wasn't. So that'll be a first down for Lakeland on the penalty by Rutherford. Let's go to the field and Terry Norvell. All right, I'm standing next to the Lakeland not mobile right here, guys. And I'm not sure how this thing, this mobile factors in for the football team. But I guarantee you one thing, if you're a dreadnought relief pitcher, you like to see this thing because number one, it means you're coming in the game. And number two, it means you're getting a ride to the mound. How about that? <laughs> All right, Terry. Why don't you take a ride in that thing? Nope. No. No. That, that's it's parked. That's that looks like the that? size of Terry's old apartment before he got married right there. <laughs> <laughs> Feel right at home down there, Mr. Norvell. We're at first and goal here, 31 to 12. Dreadnought's looking for more. Diedrich Frazier will call timeout as there was one second left on the play clock. 
We'll take a timeout as well. 7.48 to go in the Class 5A Championship. 31-12 Lakeland, back with more after this. 7.48 to go, Lakeland, the number one ranked team in the state of Florida, number six in USA Today nationally, looking to build on a big lead, and LaRonnie Galashaw takes it in from three yards out, 37 to 12 in favor of the Nogs. And LaRonnie Galashaw getting in on the scoring as well. The fullback, number two going to hand it to him straight dive play and he just falls in there and I think the Rutherford defense is a little bit tired they've been on the field an awful lot tonight and then have been put in some tough situations based on turnovers and field position and so forth and uh, against a team like Lakeland the number one team and as you said six in the country you can't afford to lose the turnover battle and lose the field position battle because all you're doing is giving them extra possession and easier opportunities to score against your great defense. Robbie Wright makes it 38 to 12. Lakeland on the other sideline. Coach Steve Harden watching on. And he knew he was going to have a bundle on his hands tonight with these dreadnoughts. And they have come out without their star quarterback, Johnny Jones, and shown why they're the best team in the state of Florida. Yeah, they really have. And, and, and Billy Castle is still coaching his players. It's 38 to 12, but they're still 739, still coaching his players. A lot of young guys still on that team. They have a lot of seniors at Lakeland, but they have a lot of young guys. you got to keep coaching them up and getting them ready and get some guys some action here in the state championship game so that when you come back, they can say they've had some experience. As far as Rutherford goes, you know, you look at them. They, uh, they have, you know, been here twice in three years now, and uh, – they have some guys who have been in the championship game, even though they've come up short, but have gotten some experience. So certainly, uh, they've got some young players, obviously with Matt Hart, who's gonna be around for a while. They can draw from this game and draw some experience. He'll be able to tell these guys the next time they come, if they should, during his career about this first game and how much punishment he had to take, yet he kept ticking and kept playing hard. And You know, I thought this game, would be a very competitive game. And for a half, it was very, very tightly contested 17-12. But the key was when the first five minutes of that second half, where we said, this is either Rutherford's got to go down and score, smash them in the mouth and say, hey, we're in this thing, or the dreadnoughts take control of it, as they did with the field position, caused the turnover, and it got away from, it just got, a little, got away from Rutherford. Rutherford loves smash mouth football. They have not come against a team like Lakeland, who quite is as dominant as they have been tonight defensively and offensively. They came against a great Lake City Columbia team. They came up against a great Kissimmee Osceola team. As good as those teams are, yeah. Lakeland is proving they're just a step better. Yeah, and, and one thing to beat a great defense is to have more than one weapon. And even though they didn't have Johnny Jones tonight, the Ronnie Gallishaw was a nice compliment to John. Johnny Mack, plus the nice reverse pass. They've used more weapons, whereas, you know, you go to Osceola, you know you got one guy to stop, and if you stop him, you've got a chance to win, and even then, they still only held him to a little over 100 yards, 140 yards or whatever, but, and they won, but this week, they got burned early by Johnny Mack, and then later on by Gallishaw, and the play, I mean, the, the, I think, too, that call by Coach Castle on the reverse pass was a gutsy call, and, uh, as you heard Coach Harden say, probably wouldn't be completed if they ran it 25 more times, but they completed it then. Saw Javon Barker, he went down with an injury in the that first hurt. half. At the end of the first half, that didn't help. New quarterback in the game, Rodney Jones throws complete first down. Getting across the 34 to near the 35 yard line. For first down yardage is Clint Davis. He makes his first catch in this championship game for Rutherford. I like what Coach Harden's doing here. You know, his son's the quarterback and has played very well, but he's only, a, you know, he's a freshman. The game's out of hand a little bit. Get your seniors in there. Let some guys up and play. This is your senior quarterback, Rodney Jones. He's only 5'6", but he's a senior. He comes to practice every day. He does what you ask of him. He's always ready to go in every game. And uh, getting him some chance to play here in Ben Hill Griffin Stadium at Florida Field, it's got to be special for him. And Clint Davis on the receiving end, also playing in his final high school game. Here's a ball right up the middle, the handoff to the big fullback. Gained a couple. And coming in instead of Johnny Jackson, that was number 30, David Atwell. Plays on the defensive line as well. He had a carry right there. There you see. 
Mr. Davis, Clint Davis, playing his last game. He had the catch on the previous play, so it's second down and eight. You want to make this a, a memorable experience for all your kids, win or lose. I mean, there's really, I hate to use the cliche, no losers in this, but there is one champion, and that's going to be Lakeland. But I like the way Coach Harden is getting his kids in there, giving them, rewarding them for being there. You remember now, these kids have been practicing since August the 9th. Think about that. August the 9th without a break. I mean, they've had one open week, which FHSA, you know, they give you one bye week, but even then you practice generally at least three days. Some coaches practice four days. That is a long, long time. I mean, colleges are taking weeks off right now before they go to bowl games, and they, and they don't practice that long. So these high school kids are, are, have really been going at it, and they should be commended. Big hit this time from the right side. It is Isaac Jackson with the hit. Picking it up is Chauncey Clark. Penalty flags all over the place. Chauncey Clark takes it to the one-yard line. Yeah, there's two things about this I don't like, and I'll get to them. I'll start with the first one, and that was Chauncey Clark right there taunting the Rutherford team as he was going in into the end zone. And there's no, there's no call for that. He's an outstanding player. The other thing I don't like is the blitz. I don't, I don't like the blitz. There you see the blitz from Isaac Jackson causing the fumble and then that right there that's uncalled for when you win and I know coach Castle's not happy about that you see him talking to his player on the sideline see he's a he's not very happy and that kid's a junior so he's gonna have some extra run extra sprints to do it when he gets back not only for the offseason I'm sure but you just don't want to see that I mean win with class and coach Castle has a tremendous amount of class I know that he's not gonna be real happy with that you know, the other thing about that is, I mean, this game is out of hand. You got to play. You tell your kids to play 60 minutes and you play the whole game or 48 minutes, excuse me, here in high school. But you know, I'm not a big fan of guys blitzing late, but I guess if that's within the scheme, I guess you, know, you can do that. But the taunting is certainly, that's unacceptable. Yeah, nothing that Chauncey Clark could gain there except for maybe a few of his friends on the sideline thinking it was a cool thing to do. But he kind of tarnishes a great night. And he'll get penalized 15 yards for it back to the 17. And he would have gotten in the end zone if he didn't taunt. Kind of turned around and he took cost a, himself cost a touchdown. Cost himself a touchdown. Get cost in the end himself zone. a touchdown. Although he already has one. <laughs> yeah, but hey, two's better than one. Why not score twice? And those aren't even the starters that are in for Rutherford on offense. So, right. you know, you, you got to question it a little bit. But it's certainly gotten away from Rutherford, and, and this is no indication of the kind of program Coach Harden has, the kind of team he has. And there you see Kendrick Frazier taking it in on the option. His second touchdown of the day, and it's a game he will long remember. Kendrick Frazier, the junior, this may catapult him into the opportunity going into the spring with some confidence to be the starter. His second touchdown, Lorani Galishaw has a couple of touchdowns. The pass from Josh Smith earlier. That was caught by Javari Sanders for a touchdown. Chauncey Clark has a touchdown defensively. Field goal as well. It all adds up to a big number. Robbie Wright looking to make it 45. His low line drive kick is good. 45 to 12 for the Dreadnoughts. It's all Lakeland in this 5A championship. Down to the field we go and Terry Norvell. Okay, guys, you have to admit, every time you come to me on the sidelines or on the field, I'm in a good mood. I'm a happy, nice person. But I'm in a bad mood right now because most of the time when I come to a football stadium, I'm the best dressed guy. It's not the case tonight. My man Brian and my man Aaron, they're the drum majors, and they have beat me hands down. I can't do anything about it, guys. Back to you. <laughs> oh, look like the Godfather Pizza Boys right there. <laughs> Benedict and Terry. And uh, that is, that, that's good stuff right there. And, 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 and that's what high school football is all about. I mean, we're here describing the guys and the players and the coaches on the field, but there's much more to the high school football programs than just the guys who step on the field between the 55 yard, uh, you know, the, the, the goal lines. And, 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 and across the field and all that. There's bands and there's cheerleaders and there's spirit groups and there's a, a, a lot of people in the, in, the, in the brass of this school that work there, you know, the faculty that care and have a lot to do with these kids being here and having their success. And, uh, you know, it's good to see 
Terry bring us some of those stories. I mean, the band is there each and every game, rain, snow, or shine. The band and the cheerleaders are there. You know, they're there for your, there for the support of the football team, and then it's up to the fans to show up. And Lakeland seems to get a tremendous amount of support from their fans. So, obviously, there's a lot to be gained. This is a, this is a state title, not only won by a football team, but won by a school and a community. And these are two great examples, both Springfield, Rutherford, and Lakeland, of communities that really rally behind the high school, rally behind the football team. Rutherford, great school for support as well. Lakeland oh, yeah. always brings a big crowd with them. They regularly get 10,000 fans at Bryant Stadium for their playoff games. And a lot of these fans made at Bryant Stadium North and a tough night for Rutherford, but hey, they knocked off Lake City, Columbia, who hadn't lost at home in the jungle in five years. They knocked off Osceola. Think about the road that they had to take to get here. Mm. They draw, a, you know, with the FHSA, you draw a district runner up. Well, this year, they draw a team who finished in the final eight last year in the first round in Jacksonville, Ed White, who has a, a numerous amount of Division I players coming out next year. That was a tough battle at home, 14 to 7. They beat perennial state playoff team and one time state champion Gainesville Buholt, mm -hmm. which they had to go on the road to win that one right here in Gainesville. Then they turn around, and as you said, they get Lake City at their place. I guess they have Buholt at home, but they get Lake City at their place where they've never lost in five years in the playoffs, beat them, and then they knock off Osceola. There you see it. Ed White, that's as tough a first-round opponent as you'll get. 14-7, a tough game. Coach Harden was telling me that was a very physical game there. And then you talk about Columbia, another physical game at their place, and then the defending state champs at home. You won at home last week. 21 to 20 so they have had this is a good football team this game is not an indication of coach Harden's team and their program it's just kind of gotten away from them they are they are going to finish 12 and 2 but they got a lot to be excited about and, and, and very proud of and not to take anything away from 6a but i think the consensus around the state is 5a is your best classification for football this year those teams you mentioned, Lake City, Columbia, Sydney Osceola, these two teams, they might win a championship at some other levels, 4A, 6A, but this year, all the talent seemed to be right here in 5A. And I'll tell you this, you know, and, 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 and some of those 6A schools in Miami may disagree with you, but the, the North in 5A is just is, is unbelievable. I mean, it's just, it's just, a, it's murderer's row. And you saw that was Rutherford coming through that. That side, and the, there was a couple of upsets that kept that from being even a tougher road, uh, at least, you know, uh, record-wise. So they deserve to be here. They got here, and uh, they just weren't quite up to the task tonight against them. Want to give some recognition to some of the players in here now. Here's Robert Patterson. He's playing in his final game. He's a senior. He's had the last couple of carries for Rutherford. And flags go down. There's Patterson, number 23. Also in there, Willie Reed, offensive lineman. He's 66. Other offensive lineman playing for the first time tonight. Tight end still in there, Chris Chandler. Brian Calippo's a senior, 64. He's playing in his final game. Matt Emig, 68. He'll be back. He's a junior. But a lot of guys getting experience here in the championship game. A couple of new guys on Lakeland's defense going in. Rick Massey, number 42, has gone in now. Uh, uh, in the secondary position for Laredo, G uh, excuse me, in the secondary position, and Adam Clayton's gone in at the defensive end position as a sophomore. Also offensively for Rutherford, Jason Price, he's playing his final game, number 71, 6'4", senior. So a lot of guys seeing action, there's 71. Massey's in there for Kareem Taylor, the man who got robbed on the, <laughs> the interception. The interception. Yeah, never said about that. Yeah, he, he got robbed, okay? It really didn't matter a factor in the outcome, but 33 for Lakeland got robbed. <laughs> Here's another senior. We mentioned him a little bit earlier. That's Robert Patterson taking the carry. It'll be fourth down and time to kick away for Rutherford. We have four minutes to go in this ball game. And there was a senior for Lakeland in there on that tackle. Johnny Jean hasn't seen as much, very much action. Number 35 in his final game, getting an assist on the tackle as he comes off the field. He's been banged up a little bit. There's some happy dreadnoughts. And, I, and now Terry was going to tell us and give us the history of Nobody's the back in front of the turn. I'm sorry. They're just gonna, yeah, they're not going to set up a return. They're just going to let it hit down. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and Terry, I know, I know he's down there and he can hear us, was going to give us the 
history of the dreadnought sometime today. Hopefully we'll get it before the end of the show. I was looking <laughs> forward to that end of the broadcast. Yeah. Window. You've got it for us, Terry. Okay, guys, yeah, I've got that history. I've been doing a little homework, even though I didn't do much in college or high school. <laughs> the nickname Dreadnought. It is a well-armed, and note that part, well-armed battleship. Hence the name Dreadnought, because it's well-armed. That explains why they're not known as the Lakeland Tugboats, because a tugboat is not well-armed. You get it, guys? You get it? A little play on words there, well-armed. Okay, that's the history hey. of the, actually, the state champion now, 1999 Lakeland Dreadnoughts. Very nice research. You get a B plus. You should be sitting across from Regis Philbin, <laughs> making some money with all that knowledge. <laughs> from the 48, handoff up the middle. Kedrick Frazier hands it off and carrying the ball for the first time. For the Knots is number 34, Torrance Ruth. Ruth is a sophomore. He'll be back for Bill Castle. Wow, look at the quickness on that sophomore, too. And this is, you know, this is what you like when you win a state championship. If you can win one, win one this way and that your young players like that guy right there wearing my number looks like me there number 34 right on this uh, same field yeah he uh he gets some experience and they can draw from this how about on the offensive line for lakeland some new faces in there is chris keller number 65 he's a junior he'll be back stewart wins 78 he's a senior stewart's playing in his final game he'll go out as a champion in his last game with the knots and there's a big stick up the middle making the hit for rutherford it's Javon Keys. He's only a sophomore, 5'70", 170 pounder. Javon Keys. Look at that kid. He was in there getting a the stick as a sophomore. So you're going to see a lot more of him the next two years in that Rutherford defense. Also in is Cass Willard. He's a tight end for Lakeland, 84. A lot of new faces playing for the first time in this game and getting a chance to say that they played in the Class 5A state championship. Hey. At Florida Field, nonetheless. nonetheless. In the swamp. In the swamp and in a romp tonight for Lakeland. A minute 58 to go, officials time out. And you really got to feel for Rutherford. I mean, this is a team, again, like we said, they have a lot to keep their heads up. You never want to go out in a blowout. But when you get back and, and, and you, you take the bus ride back to Springfield and you lick your wounds a little bit, you'll realize after you look at the big picture that it was a special season uh, and it was a special team and there's a lot of good that can come out of it. It's a very tough road to get here. Very tough road to get here. They wanted to make an announcement and the head coach Bill Castle goes out on the field and announces to his fans not to rush the field after the game. There are a lot of Lakeland Dreadnought fans starting to pile up near the sidelines and near the wall and ready to jump over. So the head coach decided to, for safety measures, go out in the field and talk to his fans. Yeah. If they want to go over, they'll go over. I don't think they less secure. There's a lot, of, a lot of security down there. I don't know if I'd want to go over. But, you know, you want to celebrate, but I'm sure they'll have a big pep rally and party back in Lakeland when they get back at the school and uh, they're out in full force as you see them ready to come over the sides. I gotta believe there's one or two Terry Norvells down there that'll just <laughs> look past the Johnny Laws and try to get on the field anyway just to say they did. There's Anthony Ronzi, he's a senior. He's another guy that put in a lot of August to December's at Lakeland. Remember, you talked about the long schedule earlier in the last four years, state championship, regional finals, state semifinals, state championship once again. That's a lot of weeks. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about 20 to 22 weeks a year, not counting spring football. That's another four weeks, or, you know, three to four weeks when our coaches play it. You're talking about 26 weeks a year of practice time in the uniform. That's not counting summer workouts. That's not counting off-season conditioning or winter workouts from January. And this is where it all pays off. Coaches try to sell their kids on a year-round. And to win a championship, you got to work out in the weight room in the winter. You got to run and work out in the weight room in the summer. And then you get one of those if you believe it. Timeout on the field as Lakeland starts to celebrate. There are the shirts already, the 99 state champions, 15-0, Class 5A. We'll be back for the final 118 right after this. Back in Gainesville, handoff in a big hole up the middle. Big yardage for Lakeland as the Knots have a first down. That's Torrance Ruth once again, the 5'10 sophomore, and that'll pretty much ice it. As we head to the one-minute mark, they'll stop the clock to move the chains. Johnny Jones, their star quarterback, did not play this game, but 
he can relish in the fact that he got this team all the way here to the championship game. And yes, it was Kedrick Frazier doing the job tonight, but Jones also deserves a lot of credit. 14 of the 15 and 0 wins came because he was the main man behind center. And he gets credit also because this has been an accumulation of three years worth of work. He's been a starter since he was a sophomore, and you talked about some of those tough losses that they've had and some of the injuries that he's had. And he's won a lot of football games as a starting quarterback, and he will enjoy that ring just as much as the rest of the players. So we're in the final minute of the 5A championship game. This is a tight game at the half at 17-12, but it has been all dreadnoughts in the second half, 28 to nothing. The defense was stunning. The offense, obviously, as good as it's been all year long. That's why we have the big difference of 45-12 on the scoreboard. One more play to go. And then Lake Lincoln start to celebrate their second championship in the last four years. Into the game, a quarterback for the first time is Prince Hickson. He's only a freshman. He's got a chance to battle for the starting quarterback job, if not next year, certainly in the near future. Well, it's time to celebrate Dreadnoughts. Lakeland will be your Class 5A state champions. 45 to 12 over a very good Rutherford Rams team. And down on the field already with the victorious coach is Terry Norvell. Okay, guys, it is crazy down here. Bill Castle's about to get, he's about to get the down. I'm gonna try to talk him out of it for a second. Coach, your defense absolutely locked down. They played like they had a real chip on their shoulders. Talk about that defensive line in particular. Hey, those guys have played all year long. I mean, they, they, they've stepped it up and uh, you, we got great quickness up there. Johnson Clark, Johnny Jean, and uh, you know, Josh Phillips and Danny Williams, those guys, they played great for us all year long. Your last state title came in 1996. Since then, you had a rash of bad luck. An entry to your quarterback, Jones, tonight in 99. And then in 97, he was injured as well. And a very questionable call, a field goal against you last year where, where a film showed 12 men were on the field. You had a lot of bad luck. It finally turned in your favor tonight. Hey, uh, you, get, you know, you got to have some luck. But tonight, our kids made their luck. I'm very proud of the whole football team. And uh, I'll tell you who the game ball goes to Johnny Jones tonight. He got us here. And uh, what a great career he's had and we're just proud of our football team all of them played great well said coach castle go celebrate a championship Thanks. okay guys they tried to douse him with the water <laughs> i was moving and grooving faster than anybody on the field back up to you you got a future in crisis management that was outstanding as he avoided the castle dunk and now bill castle is carried on the shoulder of two of his players and he will never forget this moment bill castle wins yet another state championship on the other sideline, quite a season for the Rutherford Rams. And Hey, Brady, this is a team that, yeah, they got beat tonight, but wow, 99 was special. Yeah, they're a perennial power in the panhandle without question. That's a program that's not going anywhere. They'll have plenty more chances to return as long as Coach Harden stays there and as coach and keeps doing the things he's doing. And with his son being a freshman, I don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon. From Gainesville, it was Lakeland leading 17 to 12 at the half and ended up rolling up in the second half. Their defense just really was the story and a very nice touch for Bill Castle to give the game ball to a guy who didn't even play. Yeah, he did. And Johnny Jones was the reason they got here, but the defense that shined tonight wasn't Rutherford's. It was Lakeland's defense that made the big plays tonight. So Lakeland, champions in 96, champions in 86. For the third time in school history, the Treadnoughts are state champions once again, this time in 1999. For my broadcast partner, Brady Ackerman, as well as Terry Norvell, and the rest of the Sports Channel crew, I'm Todd Callis. Thanks for joining us from Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, where the Lakeland Dreadnoughts have won the Class 5A championship 45 to 12. Make sure to tune in tomorrow, Monday, December 20th at 2 o'clock, for the Class A FHSAA football championships. Once again, the final. Lakeland, the Knots, our number one, 15 and 0, the best team in the state of Florida. They win it 45 to 12. We'll see you down the road.